stand. This really has got absolutely all sorts of different imponderables now around this game. Everybody talks about Brendan Rodgers and his future, but it looks to me as if the Americans at the moment have got to be happy. He's got to have a bit of time after what happened last season. Louis van Gaal, somehow they've got themselves with five Premier League wins on the bounce, but still against Southampton last week, they look vulnerable at the back. Who knows which way this goes today? I think in the great and long illustrious history of these two clubs, I don't think either have been in flux at the same time. We saw Liverpool dominate the late 70s and most of the 80s. We saw Manchester United dominate most of the 90s and parts of the 2000s. Very rarely have we seen two teams and two clubs in such transition. For me, the, the midfield battle is going to be absolutely key today. How many people can put their foot in and wrestle possession of the football? It happens every Premier League game. We like to think that the Premier League is tiki-taka like La Liga. It's not. You have to have a physical presence. So for me, Manchester United slightly edge that one with having Marron Fellaini in there. That's a big bruiser in the central midfield area. Of course, they got Steven Gerrard, but how long is Steven Gerrard's legs going to last in this cauldron of noise? Let's not forget as well, we've suggested that Young and Valencia are fullbacks. We may well see a Manchester United three and the two systems mirroring each other. Yeah. Three central defenders, which would be Johnny Evans, Phil Jones flanking Michael Carrick. I think that Carrick can drop back as it into a three and he can step forward into making it a four as well. So you've got two two teams playing three central defenders, two lots of uh, wing backs which might negate each other, which makes this battle for midfield even more crucial for me. I think you're uh, absolutely spot on there. I think one of the other crises of confidence for Liverpool is they've just not scored goals, Stan, and you, you know all about that. I mean, somehow... They stopped having a go. I think there's 11 Premier League goals in this Liverpool side. This time last year, Suarez and, Stur um, Suarez and Sturridge had scored 24. And if you're not scoring goals and you're conceding as many as Liverpool have, have had, I think on away days, only Queen's Park Rangers have conceded more away goals. Is That is desperately, desperately worrying for Brendan Rodgers. He's rolled the dice. He's gambled massively today with his goalkeeper, with his formation and with a youthful, exuberant attack that has talent, but can it last the 90 minutes? I have Manchester United's slight favourites to win this match. Well, you're listening to Sunday Exclusive on Talk Sports. See more of the games that matter this month with Sky Sports, of course. In a way, actually, where these managers are and who they've got as their assistants, I think it would be quite good for Brendan Rodgers and Louis van Gaal the other way around. Louis van Gaal's done it all. He takes his own counsel. He's seen it, he's done it. Brendan Rodgers perhaps needs an assistant at the moment who can question what he's absolutely doing. I would completely agree with that, and I think you've hit the nail on the head, and that is proven, perhaps, in James Wilson over Falco. Doesn't stand on ceremony, Van Gaal. He's saying, I want to pick Wilson from what I've seen. I don't care about the price tag. I'll get the player, but if the player's not performing in training or he doesn't look sharp enough, I'll play the youngster. Conversely, I, I mentioned in the press room to you earlier on, the team, the lineup, the personnel in this Liverpool team looks to me as if Brendan's been awake all night thinking, yeah. I need to do something. So they are vastly different in their experience level. I wrote today my, uh, my column in the newspaper that I think that Brendan Rodgers should be given longer time as Sam Allardyce and Alan Pardew were given. Uh, and I wouldn't change that whatsoever, but he needs to start to get the rub of the green, otherwise one or two in the Liverpool hierarchy are going to start to get a little bit edgy and nervous if they're not looking at least form-wise to be breaking into the top well, it four. Can't, I mean, it's not sink or swim, but a big bad defeat here today, Stan. And there are real question marks. Yeah, and I think that the, the, the worst-case scenario for Liverpool would be not scoring and not creating chances. The best-case scenario would be Brad Jones steps up and is a viable number two to be able to come in for the next few games. And that Raheem Sterling and Coutinho up front create problems for, uh, for Manchester United. Martin Atkinson is the referee today. Uh, Mike Riley thinks he's certainly the best referee in the Premier League. I don't agree with him. But he's got a job to do here today, Stan, after the sort of uh, complaints that we've heard yesterday from the likes of Steve Bruce and what have you. Well, we've said it on Monday Night Feist Night for God knows how long. Another debate that we've talked about, diving, cheating, simulation, is getting to extreme levels. At this level, if somebody dives in the box today and goes over very easily, 
this is going to be replayed around the world. It's not something that I think that we should be wanting to send out as a message of the best of the Premier League. So the ref needs to be on point. Really good communication and chatter between him and his linesman. And hopefully he has a good game as well. And tactically, the way that Brendan Rodgers has set up this young, explosive... Liverpool side going forward does he go right at it does he somehow try and find the intensity that blew sides away in the first 20 minutes last season or well, don't they do that here today well he's got to quite simply for Liverpool the main issue for getting personnel for a moment has been tempo that's what blew teams away in the early part of last well for all of last season virtually so the, the crisp passing, the one and two touch football that Liverpool were famed for under Brendan Rodgers last season has to come to the fore. They've been very leggy, very lethargic uh, in recent performances. And believe you me, when they come out here and step up against the side that people have written off in, in, as regarding the title, that I certainly haven't, that are on five back-to-back -back wins, is that they're going to be at least tested at times. So it's a fascinating encounter today. Absolutely on cue from Stan Collymore. The two sides make their way away from the corner, away to our left. I can look across the director's box and Roy Hodgson is having a word in Ronald Kerman's ear at the moment. The Manchester United substitutes and one or two uh, others have made their way early to the bench and those not involved are up here away to our left as well. Wayne Rooney leads out Manchester United. Steven Gerrard at the front of Liverpool. Quite simply, this is a great club game. It always is, it always will be, wherever these two sides are. And that's why you have it live, nationally exclusive here on Talk Sport. Yesterday, Swan Lake at Chelsea, according to Steve Bruce, who knew what it was like here at Manchester United. I'll tell you what we got here. We got a nutcracker. We got an absolute nutcracker this afternoon with Stan Collymore and your match commentator on Talk Sport, Sam Matterface. Well, when Stevie got stuck in mid-table, he began to shout. Lovren and Skirtle, the tempo of a turtle. There's more than one or two doubts. So it's three at the back with Old Trafford full and Van Gaal has gambled too. When Liverpool go to United, Talk Sport have it covered for you. It's live coverage of the biggest game in English football. Stan Collymore is alongside me. Who's going to have the Christmas spirit come 3.30? Form would suggest Manchester United. But Liverpool's formation and personnel has certainly thrown a spanner in the works. The 191st meeting of the two most successful clubs domestically in Europe and globally. This is a huge game, whatever the weather, whatever the transitional period either clubs are going into. Rich in history, rich in tradition, a battle of two cities and ideologies as well as football clubs. For me, Liverpool's formation is a huge huge, huge gamble Sam Matterface. Well Manchester United and Liverpool are certainly not two pub teams but neither are these two drinking at the top table United have snuck into the top four with some dogged, desperate and damn right fortunate results. Liverpool has been blighted by injuries but everyone has and they are paying a little bit for overachieving last year. The upshot is, is that if one of these two can win here today then it could act as a springboard required to mount some sort of challenge Quietly, Brendan Rodgers is coming under scrutiny. Mark Lawrenson, one of the first to break ranks, saying they are rudderless. Privately, he's not the only one with concerns. Here are the two teams. De Gea is the goalkeeper for Manchester United. Valencia Evans, Phil Jones, who's only able to play in an emergency, apparently, but has had to because of Mark Kosrochko's injury on Friday in training. And Ashley Young make up the back four. Carrick, Fellaini and Mata in midfield with Rooney just behind Wilson and Van Persie. For Liverpool, Brad Jones is the goalkeeper, replacing Simon Mignolet. It's a back three of Johnson, Skirtle and Dejan Lovren, Colo Touré on the bench. Moreno is the left wing back, Henderson the right wing back, Gerard, Allen and Lallana in midfield with Coutinho behind Sterling. Manchester United in red shirts, white shorts, black socks. Liverpool all in yellow with red trim. Liverpool will get us off and underway, shooting from right to left towards the Stretford end, which is absolutely jam-packed, always is here for this huge game. Manchester United from left to right. There's a small corner, a pocket of about 4,000 Liverpool fans. They've unfurled a banner already saying, the kids are all right. 
We might find out. We're off and underway. One of the oldest and fiercest rivals in English football. It's Manchester United against Liverpool, and it is only on Talk Sport. Seen already, Michael Carrick flanked, as we suggested by Johnny Evans and Phil Jones. The two wing-backs, Ashley Younger and Antonio Valencia, tucked in early. Who's going to win the battle for possession? Who's going to earn the right to play in this opening 20 minutes? Well, 33 miles of East Lancashire's road separates Liverpool and Manchester United. Just two honours separate them. As English football's most successful clubs, Liverpool have won 44 major honours to Manchester United's 42. But it's bragging rights they want today. Here's Lalana trickling down the left touchline, trying to get the better of Jones, who immediately is called out towards this near side. It comes off of Jones, and his first touch is to put it behind and away for the first corner of the game, and it goes to Liverpool. And Steven Gerrard gets a bit of the bird from the Stretford end as he goes over to take a corner in front of them, down by the tunnel. We saw yesterday at Arsenal, Sam, corners and set pieces at any time of the game, vitally important, not enough clubs utilise them well. And Gerrard will take this and it's distributed to the far post, the header back across goal towards Skirtle, who tries to head it towards the middle of the goal, it's hacked away by Jones and then back out to this left-hand side. Another chance for Gerrard to get the ball into the area, aimed towards Lalana, away by Carrick, headed further clear by Jones and then from the edge of the box it's out by Van Persie, looping it back forward was Gerrard to recycle and Sterling's causing problems here for Antonio Valencia. He's got the ball in the wide left position, Valencia's got something on it but not enough it loops into the air Henderson trying to keep it alive pokes it back into the wing position Valencia this time does manage to outwit Adam Lallana who slides in but he's outwitted by the Ecuadorian and Manchester United bring it clear with Fellaini and it's back to Jones and then all the way back to David De Gea who's wearing black today away to our left hand side a little bit of a fast start from Liverpool signalling their intention right from the very off very bright start moving the ball through midfield Adam Lallana, I mentioned about the support for Raheem Sterling as the false number nine has got to come from not just Coutinho but Lallana as well. He certainly offered that. Well, there's no doubt that they fancy it today, Liverpool. They've been told, sent out with a real hunger and desire. Moreno just out sprinting Jones there. Jones thought the ball was going out, but Moreno definitely gave him something to think about. Uh, I think it is a back three for Manchester United with Carrick yes, slipping in absolutely. alongside Jones and uh, Johnny Evans who's on the ball now making his first start since September the 21st plays the ball out wide left to Ashley Young who Louis van Gaal likes in the left wing back position he's blocked initially by Henderson then Johnson away and then Evans pokes the ball out of play over on the far side Liverpool increasingly looking as if they've gone into panic mode the team selection will either be a touch of genius or a desperate grasp to change fortunes if he does manage to change the fortunes today. Obviously, it will be a gamble that is well repaid for Brendan Rodgers. And we'll give him options. When in this game, in this kind of spotlight for Liverpool, would undoubtedly kick-start the second half of their season and give him a legitimate option to Balotelli, a legitimate option to uh, Lambert ahead of... Daniel Sturridge coming back over the next few weeks. My teams always get better as the season goes on, he said in his press conference. Well, they'll have to. Given away by Fellaini to Coutinho, midway inside his own half. Fellaini got out of trouble by Wayne Rooney, who comes darting back, robs Coutinho of possession and then kicks clear up over halfway. Nil-nil the score. We've played three minutes and 30 seconds on Talk Sport. And we're at Old Trafford under the floodlights on a murky, grey, overcast day with the rain trickling from the sky. It means there's a bit of a greasy surface underfoot. Liverpool in possession on halfway of one of free kick. Allen forward to Coutinho inside the centre circle. They move it wide left and here's Moreno. Moreno now out to Lallana who goes past Fellaini. Fellaini slides in. That's a late challenge. And here's the first yellow card of the game for Marin Fellaini. Yeah, we mentioned that perhaps the one player in both sides, if you accept that Steven Gerrard is going to drop a little bit deeper, the enforcer in, in both midfields is Marin Fellaini. Undoubtedly, Louis van Gaal will have impressed oh. that on him to make challenges, to make a nuisance of himself. But as he drifts out to the right of the Manchester United half of the pitch just a little bit over officious there going into the challenge oh, he was late and Alana went down but you can see right that's by, what he needs to be doing in, for the team today he needs to be the yeah, boss in the, right, in the central right by the area. touchline the free kick comes in from Gerrard it's swirled in towards the penalty spot it's headed away by Carrick and then trying to help it back forward again was Joe Allen it bounces off of the chest of 
United's James Wilson and then as it runs through to Glenn Johnson in the centre circle he kicks it clear far too high over the top of the head of Lallana and it goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our left hand side I think if there's one thing I noticed from the game in midweek with Liverpool that I think they can take heart from the fact that their team spirit and the fight that they showed after being reduced to 10 men was pretty impressive the problem being they shouldn't need someone getting sent off in a Champions League match which they needed to win in order to encourage them to start fighting for the cause nil nil here five minutes gone you're listening to talk sport there's a little bit more about them in the opening exchanges here they need to return to that high tempo game that they played at the end of last season the second half of last campaign when they were scintillating they really have dropped off the pace in the Premier League this campaign the signing to pick Sterling today as a false nine with Ricky Lambert deemed out of form and in the absence of any real available front man as an alternative have decided that with Balotelli not fully fit, Sterling is the man. Brendan Rodgers doesn't really play to Lambert's strengths anyway, so maybe this does make more sense. We will soon see. Uh, back pass by Ashley Young, very tight back to David De Gea. Raheem Sterling was nipping in, trying to latch onto the end of that loose back pass. It didn't come through to the England international. And Manchester United half clear. Henderson picking up the pieces, right side of midfield. Sends the ball down the right, looking for Adam Lallana. Cut out by initially Young, now Rooney. Now Young again in the left fullback position for Manchester United as they try and bring the ball out. I think the one thing that is a work in progress for Louis van Gaal is the kind of the passing and the movement from Manchester United. Critics would say they've been a little bit formulaic at times, that they haven't looked as fresh and as lively popping the ball all around one and two touch through the midfield to try and get the front players uh, on their toes and certainly agree with that but when you have quality players as they do with the spend that they've had they're going to come good sooner or later and that has already been borne out with five successive wins regardless of what you say about performances Liverpool pressing really high up on Manchester United Sterling, Coutinho and Lallana pressing the goalkeeper in the back three something we haven't seen enough of them uh, this season can do in a one-off game but Liverpool haven't managed to do that for 20, 30 minute spells in any game that I've seen them this season, home or, home or away. Of course, added charge for them today playing Manchester United, their biggest rivals. But can they man maintain the kind of tem uh, tempo, intensity, pressing for 90 plus minutes? Carrick so calm under pressure, sends the ball into Fellaini, who gives it back to Evans, who just loops it into the air down the middle. It's won by Van Persie, comes back to Fellaini, who heads the ball forward to Wilson. It's headed away by Skirtle on the edge of his own penalty area, and then picked up by Glenn. Johnson, the right fullback playing at third centre half today. Chip forward by Skirtle into the right position looking for the run of Henderson, but it's mopped up by Evans and all the way back to David De Gea, whose contract runs out 2016. Hasn't signed a new one yet. Here's the speed of Wilson chasing that long ball down the left side. Across goes Skirtle and it's out of play over on the far touchline and it's out of play and away for a throw. One of the things that Louis van Gaal was unhappy about on Monday night was giving possession away too much. They did that against Arsenal as well. They haven't had much possession so far in the game, Stan. Absolutely not. It's been, I'd say, at least 70% Liverpool so far, but United now camped in the, the Liverpool half and width will be a very good asset for them. Here's Valencia trying to take on Moreno in the right wing position, gets to the edge of the penalty area, whips across in, headed away by Lovren and then picked up by Lalana, who gives it to Allen and then out to the near side and Sterling who's immediately, immediately closed down by Jones who has recovered enough from his shin splints to play today. What I would say no, is no. If, if Manchester United aren't keeping the ball well and they look for the longer ball travelling over 20, 30, 40 yards into the channel for Wilson in particular which is why he's in the team, Louis van Gaal said he's in the team for pace to be able to turn uh, a Liverpool back three is that Glenn Johnson has pace, Skirtle Skirt is decent and that might give a little bit more comfort to Lovren that's been the odd man out, may I suggest, at Liverpool so far this season. Well, it's been a really weird start to the season for Liverpool, hasn't it? The style just hasn't been there. The full-backs have been told to tuck in when before they were asked to relentlessly bomb on. Mignolet was kicking long instead of playing out, mainly because he, he can't, really. And there was zero movement up front with Ricky Lambert playing up top. So I suppose if heaven was one-touch ticky-tacker and hell was the long direct route one football then Liverpool up until today were in purgatory in order to try and shake that off they've shaken up the team here's Fellaini on halfway cutting it back to Carrick and now it's out to Evans Evans Manchester United one of their longest serving players 
at present. That's a poor back pass again from Young, which almost went to uh, Raheem Sterling. And under pressure on the edge of their own penalty area, Manchester United play the ball square out to the right side of defence, and Jones gives the ball away to Moreno, who picks it up halfway, sends it diagonally left, left where it's picked up by Coutinho. Now in the pocket of the number 10 position, flicks it with the outside of his boot, trying to play in Sterling, overhit it. Sterling couldn't reach it in the left-wing position for Manchester United, and it trickles behind and away for a goal kick. Nil-nil between Manchester United and Liverpool on TalkSport. And Liverpool will look cohesive. They've uh, mentioned that both sets of wing-backs may negate each other's powers to be able to get into advanced positions. You've seen Jordan Henderson down the right-hand side, Alberto Moreno on the halfway line. Every time the ball is going to Ashley Young or to Antonio Valencia, they're closing down very quickly. They look to shift Manchester United back towards their own goal. Then it's down to Coutinho, Lallana, Sterling to be able to try and finish the job. Nick Cheap ball, get shots on target. United need to keep the ball much, much better. Rooney playing in the central midfield position today. Matter almost as the player playing behind Van Persie and Wilson is on the half turn here trying to get them on the front foot he has his feet nicked away from him by Joe Allen and a free kick is won by the home side 10 yards in front of the centre circle floodlights on here on a grey dark day in Manchester these two looking to light up their seasons Manchester United have won their last five games scrappily, scruffily, sometimes luckily but they have the points in the bag and they're in the top three in the Barclays Premier League at the moment, that's all that matters. Manchester United going backwards instead of forwards, which is frustrating for the crowd. Flick forward eventually by Jones, it's a poor ball and it invites pressure from Liverpool. Sterling hooks it over his head in a central position. Out to the left now is Lallana, approaches the penalty area, shifts it onto his right foot, plays a lovely reverse ball into Sterling. Sterling face down by the goalkeeper, shoots straight at him. Super save, David De Gea got his bearings absolutely spot on Lallana's drifting off that left hand side and creating problems, lovely reverse pass down the left hand side of the um, the D, really good run on the shoulder of the last man by Raheem Sterling great save though by De Gea should have scored here's Valencia, down the right side, through the legs of Allen, into the wing position, pulls it back here's Rooney <laughs> 10 seconds ago, Raheem Sterling should have put Liverpool in front at Old Trafford Manchester United counter-attack down the right with Valencia nicks the ball through the legs of Joe Allen and into a wide position he pulls the ball back beautifully to the edge of the area superb vision from Valencia to pick out Rooney and it's an unerring finish from the Manchester United captain to give Manchester United the lead it's United 1 Liverpool 0 and the value of having Robin Van Persie not having to go in behind as a central striker he can leave that to James Wilson is that he did his trickery he's twisting and turning to play the ball down to Valencia who gets the megs and then he's got all sorts of time and space and vision to be able to find Wayne Rooney on the penalty spot with the simplest of side foot finishes. 1-0 to Manchester United live on Talk Sport. There'll be a lot of discussion about the defensive play of Liverpool in that particular instance. Joe Allen being nutmegged by Valencia before the ball was pulled up to the edge of the area where Rooney came in untracked and finished with a blunt bludgeon of a finish curling it into the bottom corner of the net. Why Brad Jones dived to his right when the ball went to his left might be another question too. Manchester United 1, Liverpool 0. And Rooney has scored the opener at Old Trafford. And here on the left-hand side comes Mata, looking to add to their advantage. It was a really good finish, but sloppily defensively from Liverpool once again. And here is Mata, still in possession, high up inside the Manchester United half. Cut back to Ashley Young and then given to Evans. And United just retaining possession here. Liverpool, when that goal went in, set up to take the centre kick stand. And I just looked at them, and they looked as if not that they're beaten, but they looked a little bit... Oh, no, here we go again. Well, particularly after you start the game so well, the one thing that you do in any Premier League... Oh, Lovren losing possession, losing control of the ball in the left full-back position. One, one thing you do in any Premier League match is earn the right to play. And there's an argument that Liverpool did that. But now Manchester United have scored, I mean, being the second-best team, is that, I mean, Manchester United fans want them to get the ball forward. They, they see Manchester United's strength being attacking their defence, being their weakness. So they want them to get on the front foot. They want them to be proactive. They did for the goal. Makes for a very interesting game now. Valencia, wide right for Manchester United, who lead by a goal to nil live and only on talk sport. It's with Mata trundling into the centre of the Liverpool half, guides it back to Evans, and now it's with Fellaini. Fellaini 
Back to Evans and then into Young. Back to Fellaini again. Shirt untucked at the waist. Under armour of the red variety underneath that short sleeve Manchester United top and that big mop of curly brown hair. It's now with Rooney in centre field, spreads the play to the left, looking for Ashley Young, Henderson is underneath it, doesn't deal with it properly, the second header away from Henderson is better than the first, he gets fouled by Young according to Martin Atkinson, and it's a free kick right on the edge of the 18-yard box, it's 1-0 to Manchester United. I think Manchester United need to get Wayne Rooney on the ball much more, much, much more, we've had debates for many years, is he better as a central striker? Is he better as a number 10? But certainly when he gets on the ball, he's always looking to be creative. He's always looking to dry, drill the ball out to the left flank or out to the right flank. And he keeps possession of the ball. He keeps things ticking over and he can dictate play. Just watching a replay of the goal which Manchester United scored and how simply Wayne Rooney runs off of his marker, Philip Coutinho, to get some space on the edge of the area to dispatch that shot unmarshaled. 16 gone, you're listening to Talk Sport. 1-0 to Manchester United. How Liverpool respond to this is a major test of character for Brendan Rodgers' side. Especially because in the front positions, you've got three players that potentially, if they're not getting lots of the ball, what are they doing? Raheem Sterling, Adam Lallana and, and uh, Philip Coutinho are not the best defensively going back the way. So all of Brendan Rodgers' eggs have gone in the basket of keeping possession, staying the game. It's Rooney. Trying to play a reverse ball into James Wilson, edge of the area. He tries to get it back to the captain, but it's dispossessed by Joe Allen. Liverpool picking it once again, and now this is a sprint away from Henderson, whose first-time ball was looking for Sterling. It was inaccurate, stopped by Carrick on the edge of his own box and cleared away by Manchester United. It was a quick counter-attack by Liverpool. That's what they'll use to try and get back in the game, you feel. They do have that speed and intensity going forward with Coutinho, with uh, Lalana, and with... Uh, Raheem Sterling. And of course both sides have an four. outlet today. They've got four out and out wide men. Whether or not they're full backs or out and out wide men as as being specialists, it really doesn't matter. They should all be expecting to get on the ball, all expecting to be on the front foot. Lalana trying to get beyond uh, Carrick, draws the foul after clicking it through his own, own ankles. Rooney had just stretched to, to, to intercept and failed to do so, and Liverpool have won a free kick. A good 18 yards inside opposition territory, a shade left of centre. Great start to the game. Great Absolutely, start the game. very good tempo. Adam Lalana picking the ball up just as a little cruif turn in front of Michael Carrick. Gerrard, short ball out to the left side. Moreno picks it up, gives it to Sterling. Long sleeve, bright yellow jerseys. He tricks his way to the edge of the area, goes past Matter, then flicks it to Gerard, who shoots from distance, low towards the far post and going down rather comfortably because it wasn't hit with any real speed. It was David De Gea and he gobbles it up and pulls it into his chest. Manchester United 1, Liverpool 0. You're listening to Talk Sport. Brendan Rodgers will know that people were looking at him now and his team even more closely after dropping out of the Champions League at the first hurdle. And they. It's not just the Champions League exit that's a cause for concern for them, Stan. They've won only three of their last 12 matches in all competitions. Yeah, and of course when you're losing or you're not playing well in games, people start to pick up on and micromanage and dissect your performance. Already the suggestion is that Brad oh. Jones dived the wrong way for the goal, which is going absolutely mad on social media now. Um, the worry for me from Liverpool perspective is he's having started so brightly pressed so high is that they've really come back off it now. They've really been stung by the Manchester United goal and they haven't got the kind of experience that you'd like to see at this level of intensity with Coutinho or Sterling in particular to really continually roll the dice in, uh, roll the dice in uh, an attacking sense. Haven't seen so much of Mourinho, haven't seen so much of Jordan Henderson in an attacking sense. They have to have belief they haven't even gone a goal down that what they're doing and what they're trying to do is the right thing. But Possession, tempo, pressing. If they come off that for four or five minutes, they'll lose the game. If they can stay in the match, Sam, they will get a chance. Manchester United, even now, are giving the ball away with such a degree of regularity, there will be a mistake in the game that gives Liverpool an opportunity to at least get back well, into it. 1-0. Let's be perfectly honest, why did Louis van Gaal play three central defenders at the World Cup? Because he couldn't trust, or he felt he couldn't trust, players like Ron Flaar, 
um, with another partner alongside him. And you could argue that with Manchester United and you could argue that with uh, Liverpool today. So you'd think there will be chances created for one or both of these sides. Rooney picks the ball up, runs into centre field, tries to elude the challenge of Henderson and Coutinho. Coutinho knocks him to the ground and Liverpool give away a free kick to the home side Manchester United just inside the centre circle. It's cut back by Fellaini to Carrick who slides it forward looking for Van Persie. Interception is from Gerrard. It's forward by Jones. Into the air, he heads the ball down the right side. Mata guides it back to Fellaini. Fellaini can't go any further with that. It's blocked by Liverpool and they regain possession again. Just before halfway is Lalana. Can't control it. It pops out on this near touchline. Goes out for a Manchester United throw. The beauty is as well for both sets of central defenders in a three that one should always be stepping out looking to engage, looking to get a challenge in to an attacking midfield. And we're starting to see Phil Jones do exactly that now. Stepping out, leaving Michael Carrick and uh, Johnny Evans to hold the fort. He's the man going and weighing into Raheem Sterling, Adam Lallana on two or three occasions. Sign of confidence, and he comes back into the side. Here's Jones on halfway. Brian Giggs just coming out to the edge of the technical area to have a word with Jones, just whispers something in his ear. John Moss, who's the fourth official, just comes back and just tries to pull him back a little bit as Manchester United come forward. Ryan Giggs, a veteran of 48 of these encounters. Apparently did a marvellous presentation with analysis on Liverpool. I don't think he would have envisaged this sort of team selection. Here's Coutinho running towards halfway. Challenge comes in from Jones. It's a late one on Coutinho. Goes spiralling into the air, then falls to the floor. And that's going to be a second yellow card of the game. And it's to Phil Jones who goes into the referee's notebook. And that's exactly what I said, what, but 30 seconds ago, is that one of the central defenders, he's now starting to step out and he's starting to engage just in his own half or on the halfway line. That man is Phil Jones. You're going to get yellow cards by doing that, but he just needs to be a little bit careful. Wayne Rooney's goal separates these two teams and it's Rooney's sixth goal of the season so far. And it's Manchester United who lead by a goal to nil. The man born in Liverpool, raised in Liverpool, has scored for Manchester United against Liverpool. Here is Lovren, moving towards the edge of the area. Lost control of the ball, but still managed to guide it through to Moreno. Tackle comes in from Van Persie in the right fullback position, and the ball is out of play. And actually, I think it took a knockoff of a Liverpool jersey last. The referee and his assistant, Mike Malarkey, on this near touchline, conspiring to give Manchester United the throw. It's been fascinating to see how Liverpool and their season has undulated. They've actually taken seven points from a possible nine in the Premier League in the last three games. And this has coincided, actually, with the return of Lucas to the team. Steven Gerrard was dropped to the bench in two of those games. And the other, against Leicester City, in which he scored, he played in a more advanced role. I think, as well, one of the reasons today for Brendan Rodgers going with two wing-backs and three central defenders, other than... Lovren in particular hasn't been impressive. There's only QPR that have conceded more away goals, which has been dread. That's a dreadful statistic in the Premier League. I don't understand why, if after they've picked up seven points from nine, Lucas has been dropped. Uh, here is uh, Johnson on the right side, diverting the ball into the centre. Oh, it's a good header, vital header from Jones to take it away from Sterling as the ball broke into the area. It's back with Sterling now, left side of the box, tries to weave his way past Jones, gets past Jones easily, shoots towards the near post. Now that hits David De Gea's right thumb and onto the post and out and away for a corner kick. Another good chance for Raheem Sterling and he cultivated it all on his own. Good trickery by Raheem Sterling, he picks the ball up on the left-hand side of the 18-yard box, just takes the ball, teases it to Phil Jones as he gets to the left-hand corner of the six yard box should shoot across the goalkeeper's hand though Sterling with the delivery in towards the near post it goes towards Lovren it's cleared away comes out on the edge of the area still bouncing around and Fellaini will hoist it into the sky and try and get it clear it's not the most forward thinking pass by Moreno but Skirtle deals with that and it's all the way back by Johnson to his goalkeeper just an interesting scenario that developed there with Sterling running at Phil Jones Phil Jones obviously can't commit he's inside the penalty area yeah. he's on a yellow card do that all day long if you're Lallana if you're Coutinho if you're Sterling you pick the ball up, you have a little chat amongst each other and you say, play on Phil Jones, run at him. He's got to give a, a challenge away or he's got to go and engage. Which is he going to do play on a yellow card? He's going to just come back into the side as well. Glenn Johnson's got a major problem here and it looks as if Colo Toure is going to be called into action very early in this encounter. There's only 24 minutes on the clock and the first substitution is going to have to be made. I think Glenn Johnson's got a groin problem. Left area of his groin and he's come straight off, he's not going to continue and 
Toure is not ready yet. I think in the scheme of things, it's not too bad for Liverpool. Obviously, they don't want to make a substitution so early, but you've got a central defender, Liverpool's player of the month. Bear in mind, he only played one Premier League game, so it just goes, goes to show the paucity of defensive options that Liverpool have had in recent games. But still, nonetheless, a player coming back into some degree of form um, to fill in, in that uh, right central defensive spot. So, Colo Toure is on. And Liverpool down to, not, uh, to ten men. Here it is uh, on halfway. Philip Coutinho picking the ball up and just moving diagonally infield. It's chipped out towards his left-hand side. Alberto Moreno tries to meander towards Valencia, then decides to go back. Liverpool have got Couture still stripped and ready to action, but he's not actually at the moment involved. Stephen Gerrard has gone into the back three. Here is Sterling. Clipping it back into a dangerous position. Wilson's picked it up and Gerrard's got to try and get a tackle in. He does just that. Pulled out of position into the right central berth. And he puts it out in the way for a throw. And now Colo Toure can come on for Glenn Johnson. Just watching a replay actually of the sort of 20 seconds in between the stop from David De Gea and the miss by Raheem Sterling and the goal from Wayne Rooney. And then the camera quickly panning to De Gea to see how he celebrated. He celebrated with a big fist pump and a tap to his own crossbar. It's 1-0 to Manchester United. Here's Phil Jones on halfway. So Colo Toure on. After passing a late fitness test earlier in the day, he's been their player of the month after a string of recent good performances at the heart of the Liverpool defence. Well, Liverpool were given the throw. Manchester United thought it should have gone their way. It's taken quickly by Coutinho, given to Sterling. Sterling running with the ball at his feet into United's territory, up towards the 18-yard box, cuts it back to the left. It goes in centrally to Joe Allen, who's just... Outside the D, worked wide to Henderson, and now Gerrard forced to retreat, and he plays the ball against Rooney and then loses out as it runs through to Van Persie, and now Manchester United in red are in possession again inside their own half. And I think that fills the Manchester United supporters' hearts to see Stephen Gerrard make a mistake. Here is Valencia down the right side, four yards in from the touchline, running at the Liverpool penalty area. He gets to the angle, produces a cross towards the far post. It was a deep one looking for Wilson, away by Henderson. Picked up by Rooney, 10, 15 yards from the edge of the box. Goes centrally to Fellaini, now on to Matter. On the touchline near side is Valencia. United keeping possession here. Jones, Fellaini, looks up, wants it back out wide, Matter to Valencia. That's where it goes, and then Fellaini continues his run into the wing position and picks up the return ball from Valencia. He's being tracked here by... Allen but Fellaini still got it he then loses possession because he can't poke it through to Mata and here come Liverpool on the counter attack Coutinho up to the centre circle looking for Lalana. Lalana switching the play to the right Henderson trotting infield running square now through the centre circle to Joe Allen now it's on to Coutinho an early ball for Sterling it's missed by the defender Jones but then mopped up by Carrick just ahead of Sterling and cleared away by David De Gea. 1-0 United. Two observations. Raheem Sterling has got to be the man that takes it upon himself to drop off, get on the half turn in the number 10 area and run at Phil Jones for the reason why Phil Jones is on a yellow. On the other side of the pitch, Alberto Moreno is nowhere near Antonio Valencia when he picks the ball up. Valencia has five or six yards to run at him to be able to drop his shoulder to come inside or to go down the outside. Needs to get much, much closer. First corner of the afternoon to Manchester United. Ashley Young with the uh, effort which deflected off of a yellow shirt and goes behind. Let me give you the latest odds from Betfair. Talk Sports official Sunday exclusive betting partner. Manchester United 11 to 4 on to win the game. The draw 17 to 5. Liverpool 17 to 2 to come back and win. Remember, with bet there you can cash out in play on single or accumulator bets. So take your winnings before the end of the match. A 25 pound bet on United now can be cashed out for 33 pounds. Cash out is available on selected markets. Conditions do apply. Go to betfair.com, download the app, or try it today. 28 gone. 1 0 Manchester United. Corner to come in from Rooney. Far side. He delivers it in towards the near post. Evans is riding. It's away by Skirtle. Jones came there. Didn't get anywhere near it. The goalkeeper. No land wasn't he completely just needs a little bit of fortune he needs to pluck one out of the air and just get a good feel of the ball take the dew off it Sterling has picked the ball up and tried to run over halfway with it he's been chased by Wilson Carrick gets there first and then back heels it to Wilson it was a little bit of showboating from Michael Carrick and here come United again down the right with uh, Valencia 
Joe Allen comes over and clotheslines Antonio Valencia, six yards outside the box, in the right wing position. And Joe Allen, I think a little bit frustrated with his teammates in front of him what, more what than anything I, else. What I just said to you, Alberto Moreno isn't getting tight enough to Valencia, so Joe Allen's taking it upon himself to go into the left-back area and do that. And he's shown exactly the kind of frustration. He's actually turned to Moreno and said, that's what you should be doing. If you play to a wide man, as soon as it's played to a wide man, his head should be over the ball. He shouldn't be able to look up like a meerkat and be able to choose whether he can pop it left, pop it right or go past somebody. You need to make him make a decision and make it quickly, and that's what Joe Allen uh, attempted to do. Good free-kick position for Manchester United. It's wide on the right-hand side, perfect for the left-footer to drift the ball in towards the far post, and three or four Red United shirts can come across the goal and attack it. Jones is in there, Evans too, Rooney and Fellaini as well, and Van Persie has just started his run outside the area and will attack this with gusto. 1-0 to Manchester United, 15 to go before the break. Ashley Young is there alongside Matter. Young leaves it for Matter, he whips it in, left footed, not the best delivery. Actually, it's a little bit too low, the trajectory, and it's easily headed away by Joe Allen. That's how low the trajectory was. Colo Toure whacks it clear, and it's out of play over on the far side and out for a Manchester United ball on half way. Liverpool have been accused of being a soft touch this week, not putting tackles in when tackles are required, not taking charge of situations they should command. Have you seen any evidence of that today? No, I think that, um, I mean, when you've got Joe Allen, who's your kind of enforcer going over and trying to set a tone for the rest of the team, I mean, that would have been a job that Steven Gerrard would have done five or six years ago, without a doubt, had the ability supremely to be able to not just get forward and score goals, but to be able to rattle a few cages in the central midfield area. Nobody's really doing that. We've seen Fellaini that's just stepped off a little bit since giving away that foul earlier on. But I think that the thing for Manchester United, if they keep the ball as well as Liverpool did in the opening 10 minutes, I think they get a routine victory here, because I can't see where a goal or chances other than Raheem Sterling going on a mazy run, Philip Coutinho going on a mazy run, so he's down to Manchester United as the home side, in form, to pass, move, take up different positions and keep themselves out of any bother. Van Persie, back to goal in the left full-back position as Liverpool look at it, guides it all the way back to Jones, and they build again from the back. Leading from Wayne Rooney's sixth goal of the season after 13 minutes here, just 20 seconds, 10, 20 seconds after David De Gea had made a stop from Raheem Sterling. See, better even then, Manchester United are just giving themselves 40, 45 seconds with the ball just to give the back three a little breather and a little bit of space. Ball was played down the right side for Mata, intercepted by Joe Allen. Lallana then pumps it forward, it's picked up by Raheem Sterling. Fellaini has to be careful, wins possession well off of Sterling, turns and finds Jones. And United come clear with it once again. They're on halfway with Wayne Rooney, always looking to get Manchester United going once again. Playing much deeper this season, Wayne Rooney, and definitely deeper today in that central midfield position alongside Fellaini in front of a back three, with Matter as the man given the licence to roam behind the two strikers. James Wilson, 19 years of age, and Robin Van Persie. And in truth, Robin Van Persie's hardly had a kick in the game. Yeah, and James Wilson, you know, he's a young lad coming into the side, but his movement is sometimes... Because he's got lots of players in and around and doesn't quite know where to move. Is he going to come and drop short and lay it off one touch and spin away? Sometimes he's just standing in a position. Just needs to be guided a little bit by Wayne Rooney. He can dictate to him, this is where I want you. Robin Van Persie as well, as an experienced, uh, seasoned international strike partner, should be giving him plenty of chatter. Can't do it all himself. He's got to learn from somebody. Jones, right side of uh, the pitch, just approaching the... Uh halfway line, loses out as he tries to pump it into Valencia and goes out of play and away for a throw-in. Manchester United starting the match, leading Liverpool by seven points. It could go up to ten points, that gap between the two great rivals, if the scoreline stays the same. Brad Jones deputising for Simon Minier today. He's just kicked into the sky. Colo Toure approaching halfway, wearing gloves. His first half substitute for the injured Glenn Johnson sends the ball to the right side now. Henderson, halfway inside opposition territory. Liverpool, who started the game so brightly, had the ball with Moreno inside the area after a lovely, delicious ball by Gerard. Beautiful ball into the Spaniard. He just couldn't control. Well, Valencia nipped in and put it behind and away for a corner. Two things there. I'm sure that Steven Gerrard, that was meant to be higher and longer, aimed for the outside of Antonio Valencia. It completely bamboozled 
Manchester United's right uh, wing back. It came much, much closer and into the feet of Adam Lallana. So he was caught on the wrong side of the ball. A better touch. Moreno. Takes him into the box. He gets a shot on target. Yeah, Moreno's touch just let him down there as that ball comes into Coutinho, edge of the area. Allen tries to strike. Hits Fellaini. Bounces out. Picked up by Colo Toure, who's trying to get away from Johnny Evans here. Dayan Lovren now picks up possession. Right side, a yard in from the touchline, tries to trick his way past. Evans can't do so. It does fall, fortunately, to Lalana. Right edge of the air. Picks out a decent cross, which is over the head of Skirtle, who stayed in from the corner. And it's behind and away for a goal kick. Remember, in midweek, we've got the League Cup quarterfinal action for you on Tuesday night. South will be round the grounds. Derby playing Chelsea. Sheffield United, Southampton in the quarterfinals. Wednesday night, Jim Proudfoot, Alvin Martin. We're with Liverpool as they go to the south coast and face the top team in the championship, Bournemouth, who scored five goals yesterday in their win over Cardiff City. That's on Wednesday night, live commentary. Our coverage starts at 7. Next weekend, match day live, all the goals as they go in on Saturday. And on Sunday, we've got the small matter of Newcastle against Sunderland in the Tyne Weir derby. A nice early Christmas present for you. Liverpool are certainly having problems down there, left-hand side. The left-sided central defender today is Lovren. The left-sided uh, wing-back... Stroke left back is Moreno. It's amazing how many how few players now actually talk to each other. Well, apparently Steven Gerrard and Lovren spoke to each other after the Crystal Palace game. I don't think we can repeat what they said to one another, according to one of the papers today. There's a bit of a falling out between the two over Gerrard's role as a defensive midfield player. I don't think Gerrard was too happy about the defensive frailties of the Liverpool back line. Here is Ashley Young, halfway inside Liverpool territory, turning the ball into the path of Johnny Evans, who's high up inside the Liverpool half. He plays it against Henderson, and it's out of play and away for a throw on the opposite side from us. I think a good barometer of where we're at is where the, the wing-backs are. Ashley Young and Antonio Valencia, I'd say, have had the better of it in terms of being camped in the Liverpool half for longer, out of possession. Um, but Manchester United central defenders almost playing on the halfway line and Liverpool step by step, minute by minute, edging back towards their own goal rather than what they were doing in the first 10 minutes, Sam. High octane, high pressing, high tempo towards the Manchester United 18-yard box. Johnny Somebody has to come out of the pack now in the Manchester United midfield, in the Liverpool midfield and start to take the game by the scruff of the neck. Johnny Evans has been given a yellow card here for a challenge on... Uh, Philippe Coutinho, who is running at pace towards the Northern Irishman, who stuck out his right foot, brought him down. The free kick was given five yards inside the Liverpool half. They have possession again with eight and a half minutes to go before the break and trailing by a goal to nil to Wayne Rooney's strike after 13 minutes. Skirtle almost stepped on the ball and surrendered possession. He got it to Lovren, who finds Sterling. Sterling. Hands it off to Allen. Allen's diagonal ball low across the floor. Reverse ball into Lalana is cut out by Phil Jones. And Carrick gets it back to his goalkeeper, David De Gea, who kicks clear down the middle. Wilson goes to engage. Gets there before Skirtle. Skirtle pushes him in the back. And that's a free kick to Manchester United. Wayne really very quickly on the scene, having a word with Martin Atkinson, and suggesting if you're dishing out yellow cards left, right and centre, any chance of one for that? Spoke to um, Arsene Wenger, by the way, about Alexis Sanchez and his imaginary yeah. yellow cards last what night. What did he say? And he said, I said, was it the right way to react to all the tension that he was given? He said, no, it wasn't the right way to yeah. react. Good. Uh, inside the centre circle, we were, of course, last, last night at Arsenal versus Newcastle. It was a, a really good Arsenal performance against an under-strength and under-par Newcastle United side. Rooney turning in the centre field. Works it out to the right wing position, finds Valencia, Valencia taking on Moreno, decent low ball through the six yard area, a bit too close to the goalkeeper maybe, Van Persie was sniffing around waiting for something to happen, maybe if he'd gone across the goalkeeper at the front instead of uh, going to the back post, he might have got a chance. Yeah, good hard and low cross again, he's very good at that Antonio Valencia, if you give him half a yard he'll push the ball past you and drill it into the danger zone which is between the penalty spot and six yard box. I think that Manchester United now have if not midfield dominance, they're certainly edging towards that way. Liverpool haven't got anybody at the moment that's wrestled enough ball back. Maybe somebody like Emre Shan that is combative, physically strong, got good pace in the central midfield areas. Might be a second half uh, option for Brendan Rodgers. Ashley Young twisting and turning over in the left wing position, trying to get the better of Henderson. He dives in, plays the ball against Young, he says, and it goes out for a goal kick. 
Ashley Young furious with that decision and tells Martin Atkinson so. I was just about to say, actually, Stan, before you said that, after a shaky start, Manchester United have just started to edge it, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, the it, you can always tell, I mean, the, the central defenders are defending the halfway line, so virtually every Manchester United player by the goalkeeper is in the Liverpool half of the pitch, which suggests, suggests territorial dominance. I mean, like they say, they've done it. They haven't spectacularly played the ball one and two touch around the midfielders of Wayne Rooney, Marin Fellaini and uh, Juan Mata. But it says as much about Liverpool's paucity in the central midfield areas and the ability to be able to dominate as it does about Manchester United's dominance in that area currently. You're listening to Manchester United 1, Liverpool 0 on TalkSport. Don't miss more of the games that matter this month with Sky Sports. It's 1-0 to United thanks to Wayne Rooney. And uh, Ashley Young was right to be furious about not being given the corner just moments ago. Clearly was a Manchester United decision. Here is Mata bringing the ball through the centre circle. In possession for United, seven yards inside Liverpool territory. Plays it left to Evans. Evans just trundles forward into the left wing position where Ashley Young is waiting for it. Young gets it onto his right foot, delivers the ball into Van Persie. Back post is Matter sneaking in and pushing it beyond the goalkeeper, Brad Jones. Unmarked, unwatched, unbothered. He's put Manchester United 2-0 in front. They failed to score against Liverpool last season, Manchester United. They are making up for it today. It's Manchester United 2, Liverpool 0. In crossing positions, it's just way too easy for Manchester United. Whether it be Antonio Valencia that has done it most of the time down the right or Ashley Young, you've got to put more pressure on the ball, Moreno. You've got to put more pressure on the ball, Jordan Henderson. Is he offside when this ball comes in from Ashley Young? Ball gets whipped in, we haven't seen it from the angle yet. Robin Van Persie attacks the near post. One matter drifts in behind Moreno at the far post lovely header he gambles what you have to do no not offside for me let me just I have think, a little look he, might be he may he well might be. be hold on let's have a little look again little flick head a mile offside shouldn't have counted if Van Persie gets a touch on that he's offside if he doesn't he isn't well it's a goal and the referee's giving it Either a debate for after the show. Either way, you'd be a little bit concerned that he still managed to get in round the back. It's been way too easy when Manchester United's wide men have had the ball. Like I say, not enough pressure on it from the uh, wide men today. When one matter scoring a header, there is trouble. Manchester United 2, Liverpool 0. And that will be one to debate. Was that offside or not? Mike Malarkey, who is the official on this near side, didn't signal... I can only think that he didn't believe that Robin Van Persie got a touch on that and that's why he's kept his flag down. We'll have to see it in more detail at half-time. It's 2-0 to Manchester United and can you see Liverpool scoring two goals? They're on the front foot now. They have Gerrard playing the ball out wide right to Henderson. Henderson looking for Philip Coutinho. Coutinho in the right wing position trying to trick his way into the box. Gives it straight to Wayne Rooney. And Rooney... Runs the ball up to and into Coutinho. Coutinho comes back in, free kick given, very quickly into the box, looking for Sterling with a header. And it was Henderson's delivery, which Sterling got on the end of, but he doesn't really test David De Gea. Well, a good cross, a good riposte from Liverpool, and it needed to be, but these... Can I ask a question? You may. Why did no Liverpool player go and surround the referee and have a go at him, say to him... That was offside ref, cause a massive fuss. Well, Alberto Moreno was last man on the left-hand side of the eight uh, of the six-yard box, so he's been dragged in. When the ball is on the left, everybody shifts over a position, so he's actually in a very good position, Alberto Moreno. But when the ball is whipped in, Van Persie gets the header. Surely Moreno must see. First, he was, his feet were planted firmly on the ground, so he wasn't expected to go and challenge Juan Mata. But like you say... No challenge from Liverpool's players. They have to be careful now because I'm just looking around and you see Steven Gerrard, a really experienced campaigner, and not a lot else in and around in front of him. Well, there was a banner that was unfurled in the Liverpool end before the start of play today. It said the kids are all right. It's not going all right at the moment. It's another yellow card for Manchester United. Wayne Rooney has been given that, the Manchester United captain. It's the fourth yellow card of the first half. We've got a minute and 50 seconds to go. And it's Manchester United 2, Liverpool 0. And the foul was on Philip Coutinho. And ball is out of play over on the far side. Martin Atkinson is having a word with Ashley Young. And uh, 
the ball is now played into the right wing position Dom McGuinness is on the touchline Dom I think I heard a chant to Brendan Rodgers a little bit of a teasing chant yeah, it, what, what's he look like on the touchline it's the chant that you've heard at grounds all around the country when a manager's in a bit of bother sacked in the morning is the United fans chant it's fairly predictable but of course Brendan Rodgers not a happy man in that technical area Tom McGuinness with us here at Old Trafford today as Manchester United 2-0 in front before half-time but have some defending to do here because Fellaini has given away a free kick over on the far side a yard in from the touchline this is level with the edge of the penalty area attacking the Stretford end and right now this is the moment that Manchester United have to be on the ball and ensure that Liverpool don't get any inspiration it's where Liverpool need to be dragged back into the game by their captain Steven Gerrard who's about to distribute right side with his right foot can he curl this into a dangerous area? Skirtle, Lovren, Colo Toure all waiting in the centre. It's a poor ball in by Steven Gerrard, easily fielded by Van Persie. He tries to engage and get a second header in to recycle the ball, but can't do so, and Manchester United clear. Well, so the worst-case scenario from a Liverpool perspective would be to lose the game 2 or 3-0, or 2 or 3-1, and not have a, you know, a, a meaningful spell of four, five, six shots on target. That was the aim, really, of the high pressing today and the personnel. I'd be astounded if Balotelli and, uh, and Lambert didn't come on at some point in the game. Coutinho running to the byline, down the right side into the area, tries to pull a cross in. It comes off of Evans and goes behind. There's a problem for Sterling on the edge of the area that requires some attention. Two minutes of added time at the end of the first half. And Raheem Sterling just gingerly getting to his feet on the edge of the area. I'm not entirely sure what happened on the edge of the box there. But Raheem Sterling now just edging back into the 18-yard box. Coutinho will take this corner. Far touch line. Gerrard runs towards the near post. Rises. Misses the ball. It's too high for him. Wilson gets it clear. It comes back out to Alberto Moreno. Strikes from 30 yards from goal. And he skies it well over the top of the crossbar. And once again, the Manchester United fans' spirits are raised just a further notch. Well, Brendan Rodgers has been furiously making notes into a little piece of white paper which was uh, being held in his left hand, but really, he's got a lot of thinking to do and he needs to encourage this team, cajole this team on. The game isn't over at 2-0, is it? Not with this Manchester United defence, is it? No, but I think that... Liverpool need a physical presence up front, they need a physical presence in midfield, that is blatantly obvious. I mean, Raheem Sterling's done OK when he's got on the ball, he's looked to get on the half turn and run at the back four, that's all well and good. But I always think that you need to have a specialist in around the 18-yard box, somebody to build the play off, somebody to hold the ball up, somebody to give you a platform if you're not keeping possession of the ball particularly well. A little bit too easy for Manchester United at the moment. Emre Shan needs to come on, no doubt about that. I think that in that central midfield area from the halfway line to the edge of the Man United uh, box, he certainly has the pace and the power and the, the physical strength to be able to wrestle the game back from a Maron Fellaini or a Wayne Rooney because that's not happening from a Liverpool perspective at the moment. Another mistake. Ball put out of play. And it's the Liverpool who have surrendered possession once more, this time to Manchester United on halfway. And it's collected by Jones and then Carrick. And, you know, you say that about Manchester United having it a little bit too easy. And, and you're right, because in the first 10 minutes, Stan, it was difficult for them. They were under pressure up until the 12th minute of the game when Sterling had that great opportunity to put them in front. Manchester United were under the cosh. And how different the game might have been if Sterling had taken that chance. He didn't. And just 30 seconds later, Manchester United were 1-0 up through Wayne Rooney. A second goal, maybe a shade of offside about it if Van Persie got the touch when Mata nodded in five minutes before the break to make it 2-0. As far as we understand, Van Persie definitely touched it. That means he was offside, but it's double Manchester United's advantage. You know, last year, Liverpool nearly won the title. They started today 18 points back from Chelsea, and it ain't getting any better. It's Manchester United 2, Liverpool 0. Second half to come here, then it's called Collymore. 8 7 one 7 double, two, double, three, double, four. Follow on this week there with Capital One Cup. Two quarterfinals on Tuesday. Round the grounds with Dan in the FA Cup second round replays with all sorts of sides dreaming of the big one in round three, which you'll be able to hear on Talk Sport come the new year. And then on Wednesday night, uh, Jim and Alvin Martin at the Gold Sands. It is Bournemouth against Liverpool. And uh, I shall be with the Moose at White Hart Lane for Spurs against Newcastle. Spurs at Swansea later on this afternoon. All that action to come on Talk Sport. Um, 
crazy for me this game, Stan, because, yeah, Manchester United deserve to be leading, but Liverpool have got to score chances. You've got to take your ch chances at this level. They, could, they should have been one up, as uh, Sam and you were saying in commentary. They've had at least two other really good chances. I can't believe how much ball Manchester United are allowed to give away without anybody punishing them in this Premier League. The, uh, the obvious things to me are is that Liverpool started very brightly, but like you say, you need to have some physical strength allied with the football. I mean, even Luis Suarez last season, although he's not a huge, hulking, big man, he had physicality, he had grit, determination, he could roll people, he could fight people. Liverpool in advanced positions have had Raheem Sterling that's done OK, but in the central midfield area, Liverpool are all over the place at the minute. They can no longer rely on Steven Gerrard to dominate a midfield. Um, Philippe Coutinho and Adam Lallana have drifted out of the game after 10, 15 minutes. And it's been all too easy for Wayne Rooney and Maron Fellaini to win the midfield battle without winning the midfield exactly. battle, if that makes sense. No, it, complete, it makes complete sense to me. A lovely goal from Wayne Rooney, the first one. The second one, definitely offside. I don't know what the linesman's doing there or the assistant referee. I have not got a clue how that was a goal. Look, Manchester United deserve to be in front. There's no doubt about that. But this Liverpool side, you talk about this physical strength, their mental strength has gone. They're shot this point. And conversely, points. Manchester United, you do start to believe uh, that they have the belief that they can go on and mount a title challenge. I said it a couple of weeks ago now, well, 10 days ago now, Manchester United are properly in this race. Yeah. It's all about winning games. It's not style points. And if they're winning games whilst not dominating and playing the Manchester United way, inverted commas, then what's going to happen when all of their playing staff are back, they're all fit, and there's competition for places? Yeah, no, uh, uh, Stan, I completely agree with you on all of that. Uh, just one other thing here, though. Brendan Rodgers has made the, the gambles here in the first half. I don't think they've worked. Do you know what, for me? I put Balotelli on and say, you're playing for Liverpool. Well, they've got two you're playing for your career now, Balotelli. Second half at Manchester. <laughs> you're playing. He's Get out one. there and do something. No, that's they've, only got, got they've only got two substitutions uh, uh, left, of course. That's one of them. Straight away, now. A striker and Emre Shan for Joe Allen. Well, OK, but it's got to be Balotelli for me. I know everyone will say Ricky Lambert, you know, and everything, because his heart's there and everything. Balotelli is the class man if somehow they can get 45 minutes out of him. Otherwise, they're on their way. And Brendan Rodgers has better start worrying I about said, transatlantic what did I say? phone calls. I'll tell you that. What did I say to you before the game, the worst case scenario? I'm not getting shots on target and losing 2-0, and that's the way it's heading at the moment. Cool, Colin, well, what do you think already, Stan? I think a lot of uh, Liverpool fans need to be on. We'll here. dissect the teams, abso that, absolutely for sure. I mean, there's still 45 minutes of the game to play, but I think that the way that the teams have uh, set up, um, the gamble by Brendan Rodgers, the gamble by... Um, Louis van Gaal as oh, well, exactly. with playing oh, exactly. James exactly. Wilson. Exactly. Um, so without a doubt, we'll, we'll go into it at Cork Collingwood And yesterday, and yesterday. Swan late yesterday at Chelsea. No Balotelli so far here today. They need it. Swansea against Spurs later. My word, this one's interesting too. Talk Sports Ian Danta. Thanks, thanks. Good afternoon. Arsenal had never lost to Swansea in the Premier League until just over a month ago here when Gary Monkside won by two goals to one. Now the chance to end a similar record against the Gunners' North London rival Spurs. Mauricio Pochettino has seen his side win two and lose three of their five post-Europa League fixtures and he suggested that Thursday to Sunday is not enough time to prepare between fixtures. Whether that's a genuine excuse or a gripe his side have little margin for error coming here if top four is a realistic ambition a win would see them potentially up to seventh if Liverpool stay as they are behind at Manchester United and they would also leapfrog their host Swansea in the process today with three points player reunions on both sides Gilfie Sigurdsson has been in sparkling form since his permanent signing here from Spurs in the summer he suffered a bit of a torrid time during his time at White Hart Lane Ben Davis moved the other way in the summer and is now starting to establish himself as the Spurs left back after a quiet start both those uh, players are set to figure today Gerhard Tremel will definitely be in goal for Swansea with Lucas Fabianski suspended after his red card against West Ham no Adebayor for Spurs due to personal matters but Kyle Walker may return in the other fullback position an intriguing game as you say Sags it kicks off at four o'clock reports into Cole Collymore from Swansea City against Tottenham Hotspur the form zone on TalkSport with Betfair. You can now get better odds after you place a bet with Price Rush, giving you bigger wins. Selected single bets and markets conditions apply. Well, I'll tell you what, you, can, uh, you, you definitely know the second half here is uh, going to be exciting. We've got the betting on uh, what's going to happen at Swansea Spurs later on, but let's start really with the second 45 here, Barry Orr. Yeah, Mark, 1-25 to 25 Manchester United to go on and win this. Liverpool 55-1. to 1. 
14 to 1 to draw. 25 pounds pre match bet on United can cash out now for 41 quid. More importantly, your over three and a half goals charity bet can cash out now for 150 quid. What are you going to do? Do you stick or do you go ahead and play? Well, that's a really difficult one, Barry, and I'm just going to I'm going to let it ride. I mean, I'm in half a mind there, but I'm going to let it ride, I think, at the moment. There's definitely more goals in this uh, game. It served you well so far this year, Mark. Probably a good shout. Well, now, come on. Swansea, can they do Spurs? Yeah, Swansea 7-5 to five at the moment. 21-10 to 10 Spurs. It's a little over 2-1. to 12-5 to five to draw. One all draws being well back at six to one, and bear in mind, 57% of correct score bets are currently being price rushed by 58%. So one all draw, very popular at six to one. Barry, all thank you very much indeed. With the very latest more from Sam Matterface on Betfair during the second half commentary here from Old Trafford, Manchester United against Liverpool, and all the very latest from Betfair. The Form Zone on TalkSport with Betfair. You can now get better odds after you've placed a bet with Price Rush, giving you bigger wins. Selected single bets and markets conditions apply. Well, if Liverpool get nothing in this second half, that early high press will get plenty of stick from the press tomorrow. Here's Valencia, down the right side, through the legs of Allen, into the wing position, pulls it back, here's Rooney! Seconds ago, Raheem Sterling should have put Liverpool in front at Old Trafford. Manchester United counter-attack. Down the right with Valencia. Nicks the ball through the legs of Joe Allen and into a wide position. He pulls the ball back beautifully to the edge of the area. Superb vision from Valencia to pick out Rooney. And it's an unerring finish from the Manchester United captain to give Manchester United the lead. It's United 1, Liverpool now. Young gets onto his right foot, delivers the ball into Van Persie, back post, his mouth is sneaking in and pushing it beyond the goalkeeper, Brad Jones, unmarked, unwatched, unbothered. He's put Manchester United 2-0 in front. They failed to put score against Liverpool last season, Manchester United. They are making up for it today. It's Manchester United 2, Liverpool 0. Is he offside when this ball comes in from Ashley Young? He may well be. Hold on, let's have a little look again. Little flick at a mile offside. Shouldn't have counted. If Van Persie gets a touch on that, he's offside. If he doesn't, he isn't. Well, it's a goal and the referee's giving it. Sunday exclusive on Talk Sport with Sky Sports. See more of the games that matter this festive period, including Liverpool versus Arsenal, live only on Sky Sports. Get it straight from Selco. Selco. It's where the trade goes. At Selco Builders Warehouse, we've been nailing down our prices so you can always get a massive range of great trade products at great trade prices. For instance, during December, a Boss 10.8 volt drill driver pack with two lithium ion batteries is only $84.99, excluding VAT. And now see thousands of products and check stock online at Selco's new mobile friendly website, selcobw.com. Get it straight from Selco. Selco. It's where the trade go. Imagine you're hungry, very hungry. You put your last coin in a vending machine and choose a snack. A giant octopus suddenly appears and shakes the machine, making everything inside fall into your open palms. What a delightful surprise! Much like with Betfair's price rush, where you can get better odds even after you've placed the bet. So you can win, big style. This is play Betfair. Terms apply at Betfair.com. If you're thinking of selling your car, why not let go of all the hassle that comes with it? Including those random people who turn up to test drive it with no intention of buying. And those people who come with checks that bounce way off into the distance. They know who they are. Let go of all that and sell your car quickly and easily in just three simple steps. One, two, three, and you've sold your car in a 20-minute appointment. Just enter your reg number now at webuyanycar.com, the UK's favourite car buying service. If this clutter in your gutter, get a brush, hedgehog. If this clutter in your gutter, get a brush, hedgehog. If this clutter in your gutter, don't be daft, don't be a nutter. Just be sure to get a hedgehog gutter brush. Say goodbye to gutter clutter with the amazing hedgehog gutter brush. Trust only genuine hedgehog gutter brush in your gutters. If this clutter in your gutter, don't be daft, don't be a nutter. Just be sure to get a hedgehog gutter brush. Think of the little Confidence is an enigma. One day you're scoring for fun, another you don't know where your next goal's coming from. 
There's no coaching manual, no FA badge. Good job I don't need one. Free kick, 25 yards out. Feel good. Keep a cool head. The confidence to win. Head and shoulders, the confidence to stay on top of your game. See every goal first with Sun Goals. For video highlights from every Premier League and FA Cup game. Sun Goals! Join today and you'll get a free retro football shirt worth up to £40. Choose from hundreds of Premier League, Football League, European and international shirts available. To get your shirt and three months of Sun Goals, join today at thesun.co.uk slash shirt. The Sun. We feel football. Terms and conditions apply. Free trial requires cancellation. What's going, to second, what's going to happen in the second half here at Old Trafford? Well, Manchester United two up. Balotelli has been out warming up at half-time. Wonder if he's going to come on. Will he make any sort of difference to Liverpool? Uh, following on from that, it's Cole Collymore from four. And then Ray Stubbs will be with you and the boys on the press pass. A must-listen on early Sunday evening, as is Brian Moore and James Haskell with all the very latest on the rugby union. Before we get through to Matt Ford and another big night out. Party time towards Christmas with Matt Ford and Russell Hargreaves overnight. Um, it's a great 24 hours to come on TalkSport with uh, tomorrow night's Spice Night with Stan and myself. You'll remember us from Grassroots a couple of weeks ago. The FA have demanded to come in on the show tomorrow. We said, come on in, and they'll be with us between 8 and 10. We won't want to miss that tomorrow night. Here with the very latest is James Gibson. Thank you. Good afternoon. Manchester City are facing an injury crisis after losing Edin Dzeko and Vincent Company at Leicester yesterday. Dzeko hurt his calf in the warm-up. Company suffered a recurrence of a hamstring injury. Both are expected to be out until the new year. Two-time Olympic champion Sebastian Coe says the current doping allegations in athletics are some of the most damaging the sport has ever seen. Lord Coe is the vice president of athletics governing body, the IAAF which is investigating claims of systematic doping in Russia. Lee Westwood has finished his year in style. He's won the Thailand Golf Championship for the second time in his career. All the latest sports news is on the website, talksports.com. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, diligence and knowledge. Come on, give us a goal. Muppet Talk Sport. Well, still waiting for the two sides to come out here. What will Brendan Rodgers have said to his young side? Because there's, there's no doubt there's brittle confidence there, Stan. You can't go ranting and raving at this lot at the moment or else that's it. And, and when you buy those type of players, as Arsenal have bought, is that, you know, that's why you have situations whereby Manchester City, Chelsea, Manchester United of old have all had senior heads right the way through the team from central defence, usually an experienced goalkeeper, an experienced central midfielder, to be able to guide them through. Arsenal don't have it, and Liverpool certainly don't have it. They've got one warrior left, and he's on borrowed time in Steven Gerrard, but around the rest of the team, it's still very young and very fragile. Don't know if any changes are to be made. Don McGuinness will be keeping an eye on that at the moment. Uh, there aren't uh, 11 Liverpool players out there. Uh, I think there is going to be a big change one, to two. be made. I tell you what, just before I say this, I know who it is. It's Balotelli. He's just come out of the tunnel. He's already stripped. He's walking on his own. He's got the cameras on him and everything. Well, we've got a great 45 minutes to come. Well, if Balotelli doesn't do the business, it's beginning to look a lot like crisis at Liverpool. Sam Matterface. You know, last Monday, I watched a rerun of a classic encounter from about 15, 16 years ago between these two, two uh, when... Uh, United were 2 0 up at Anfield. Dennis Irwin sent off. Late goals from Jamie Redknapp and Paul Ince rescued a point. So Alex Ferguson absolutely furious that night with the referee David Ellery, who sent off Irwin actually later in the game and gave Liverpool a penalty. And we were saying a couple of us in the press room at half time there could be a sending off in this game too because it's been really spicy. We're underway in the second 45. Adam Lallana is off. And on comes Mario Balotelli after missing six games with an injury. Uh, he still might miss a couple more if indeed he ends up uh, getting banned after his Twitter and Instagram problems. He scored twice here for Manchester United, uh, against Manchester United in the 6-1 victory for Manchester City a couple of years ago. But he hasn't scored a Premier League goal for Liverpool since arriving. So I'll run through the two teams for you just a second. Manchester United leading by two goals to nil. Balotelli has the ball though on halfway. Looking to make some magic happen. Skipping away from Rooney. And past Wilson. Gets his ankles nicked by Wayne Rooney who's 
already been booked in the game and a free kick is given in Liverpool's favour on this right-hand side. So De Gea is the goalkeeper, Valencia Evans who's been booked, Jones and Carrick, uh, the uh, part of the back three. The ball goes into the box looking for Balotelli. Moreno keeps it alive over on the far side, the left. It's infield towards Joe Allen, back to Moreno once again. Uh, Sterling looking for the ball and it goes out of play. We said at half-time, I don't think this game's over yet. And if Mario Balotelli comes to life, he could have a big say in the outcome of it. Yeah, and I think he, what he has to do is he has to provide that physical presence and occupy central defenders in a manner that Liverpool didn't really do beyond the first 10, 15 minutes of the first half. So he's got to back into people, he's got to feel people, he's got to get headers on top. Sterling in towards the near post, Henderson arriving and just gets there and can't connect properly with the ball. It goes over the top and into the Manchester United fans away to our right-hand side. United attacking the goal away to our left, the Stretford end in the second half with red shirts, white shorts, black socks. Liverpool all in yellow with thick red trim shooting from left to right towards their supporters who are in the east stand away to our right-hand side. And uh, I'll run through the two teams very quickly for you. De Gea, the goalkeeper, Valencia, Evans-Jones, Carrick and Young, the back five, Fellaini, Rooney, Mata, the three midfielders with Wilson and Van Persie up top. For Liverpool, Jones, the goalkeeper, looks to have made a mistake for the first goal. Glenn Johnson was replaced in the first half, so the back three is Toure, Skirtle and Lovren. Moreno, the left wing back, the right wing back is Henderson. It's Gerard Allen in midfield with Coutinho and Sterling and Balotelli up front in this second half. It's 2-0 to Manchester United and the foul has just been given in their favour in the left fullback position against Philip Coutinho who got uh, a bit of rough treatment in that first 45. Well, I think that for Liverpool, they've obviously got to come out the blocks and try and sustain the first 10 minutes of the first half into the whole of this second half. Then you could see them coming back from a 2-0 deficit. If the game starts to ebb away and drift away from them and uh, Maron Fellaini, uh, Wayne Rooney in midfield start to get a little bit of a head of steam which then provides service to the wide men, it could be three or four. Maron Fellaini is holding on to his chest, his rib area, complaining he's got a whack in the side and it was Alberto Moreno who went into his side with an elbow. I don't think it was necessarily intentional but it's caused... Fellaini some discomfort, he's rolling around in agony about 10 yards outside the Liverpool penalty area away to our left-hand side. Um, a year ago this weekend was the 5-0 demolition of Tottenham Hotspur at White Hart Lane by Liverpool. It seems a very long time since they produced a performance like that. They are nine points and 15 goals worse off than this time last year. They are 2-0 down at half-time to Manchester United, their rivals. And the free kick will be taken over on the far side, the right, by Juan Mata. He'll drift this one into the penalty area. Jones is up from the back, so is Evans. Van Persie lurking with intent, and so is Wayne Rooney too. Four minutes played, second half. Carrick just came over to take some instructions. Ball drifted into the box. It's aimed towards the far post. Colo Toure away, under no real pressure. Retrieved by Van Persie in the left wing position. Comes back to Rooney, pings the ball back to halfway. We're waiting for it is Antonio Valencia. Space for Fellaini, far side. He's moving again after coming back on the field. Uh, infield to Jones, 1-2 to get the ball out to Valencia. Tries to take on Moreno. Cleared away by Lovren. And now picked up by... Mario Balotelli. Balotelli swinging the ball forward, giving it straight to Ashley Young. Never going to be too popular here. Played for Manchester City, of course, and then Liverpool. Well, at the moment, the game's going through a little bit of a lull, isn't it? Both sides just feeling each other out a little bit. Where do they want to go in this game? Do United want to go on and score a third? Are they a little bit concerned with recent form? Not recent for him winning games, but a little bit. That's a mistake, and it's given straight to Raheem Sterling, who rounds the goalkeeper. Great chance for Liverpool. Oh, he's missed it. Oh, he's missed it. Raheem Sterling picked up a short back pass on the edge of the 18-yard box. The goalkeeper came out, he went round him, and then he gave it back to David De Gea. What is Michael Carrick thinking? Absolutely no communication between the three Manchester United central defenders to the point that Michael Carrick, the ball's gone past him towards the edge of his own 18-yard box and it's taken him a good two or three seconds to react. Raheem Sterling, once he's round De Gea, needs to just slot it in the back of the net. Henderson on the edge of the area, tries to shoot, blocked by Wilson, cleared away. 
Oh, Raheem Sterling couldn't finish an ice cream this afternoon. He... What an incredible miss by Raheem Sterling. He's had two great chances and he's missed them both. And here come Manchester United looking to punish at the other end. Wilson, edge of the D, on to Van Persie to Rooney. Rooney shoots, saved by the goalkeeper down low. And it wasn't really that testing for Brad Jones, the Australian goalkeeper. But it was a quick serve of notice by Manchester United that they too pose attacking threat but they're just a little bit more ruthless and have been in front of goal Balotelli and Van Persie clashing on halfway Van Persie goes down and Martin Atkinson gives a free kick in Manchester United's favour Balotelli not entirely happy about that well there was a lot of chatter at half time down in the press room that there's a potential for a red card in this game two volatile figures in Robin Van Persie and Mario Balotelli look Robin Van Persie's gone past him, he's done him all ends up and Mario Balotelli has his hands all over him. Silly from Mario, particularly when he's just come on, he just needs to play his way into the game, give his side a platform to build from. They've already had one really good opportunity and there he goes down holding his leg after another challenge. Controversy follows him wherever he goes. Uh, Wilson on halfway just about holds on to it, having to stretch and his left leg to just keep it away from Colo Toure. Right of the centre circle is Juan Mata. Picks the ball and plays it along the floor into uh, Valencia. And it's uh, a challenge by Alberto Moreno on Valencia, which could yield a free kick in the left fullback position. I feel really sorry for Raheem Sterling because he's had two great chances. I know his finishing hasn't always been his best tool. Yeah, but if he's starting to mess around with contract negotiations and the belief is in the rumours of Real Madrid, etc, etc, and it's his agent, then with the greatest of respect, you know, watch players like Gareth Bale, Karim Benzema and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo in how to finish. He has to convert more chances. He goes round the Gaia. He could dink him. He can just go past him and just slot it in the back of the net. He waited, he waited, he waited again. Got to put those chances away. Two really good ones. Balotelli on Fellaini. Fellaini responds in kind with a challenge on Joe Allen. It sends Manchester United away into the right wing position. Robin Van Persie takes it into the area. Needs to cut it back here. Runs into traffic. Allen, he's skipped past him. He's skipped past him again. Then gone out of the area. Then gone back into it on the right-hand side. He's being trapped by Alberto Moreno, who comes across, gets a tackle in, then plays it against Van Persie. Does very well indeed, actually, Alberto Moreno. And it goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our left. Darren Fletcher warming up on the touchline. Maybe he'll be the next one to come in and try and stiffen that Manchester United midfielder. Midfielder Fellaini and Wayne Rooney today. Manchester United leading by two goals to nil, but the best chance of the second half has fallen to Raheem Sterling. And boy, should Sterling maybe have slotted that one away. Went round the goalkeeper, David De Gea. To be fair to David De Gea, he went down quickly. The England man went round him, he still got back to his feet in enough time to stop it, so goalkeeper did well as well, as much as we should chastise Raheem Sterling for failing, failing to put his chances away, we should be applauding the goalkeeper too. Here's Fellaini on halfway. Mario Balotelli looks a little bit spicy, he needs to keep those elbo elbows in check. Ball comes back to Carrick and then Rooney. I Evans. think the disappointing thing from a Liverpool perspective is, is that as good the little chances that Raheem Sterling's had is that Manchester United's midfield in this most passionate of games in terms of Wayne Rooney and Marin Fellaini won't have had the most difficult game that they're going to play this season and it always should be they should have eyes in the back of their head looking for Liverpool players looking to weigh, in, weigh into them as it happened James Wilson picks the ball up from the pass from Mata he's 25 yards from goal he shoots from distance and it flies over the top of the crossbar 54 on the clock, Manchester United 2, Liverpool nil. you're listening to Talk Sport. And Manchester United leading here and going 10 points clear of their fierce rivals Liverpool from down the East Lanks Road. Louis van Gaal and Ryan Giggs just sitting in the Manchester United dugout, taking it all in, plotting their next move. Here's Skirtle at the heart of the Liverpool defence. Brendan Rodgers hasn't moved. He's always in the technical area. What has he got up his sleeve? What can he come up with? He's made two changes already. Adam Lallana has come off. Johnson had to go off in the first half with an injury. 
You still feel aggrieved, I think, at that second goal for Manchester United, which was offside. Here is Balotelli picking the ball up, running diagonally to the left edge of the area, cuts back, then shoots from 30 yards, which is initially blocked easily by Fellaini. Ball out of the sky by Coutinho, comes towards this near side. Odd decision by Balotelli, that. Well, he had specifically Philippe Coutinho that had dropped into the number 10 role 10 yards outside of the uh, the edge of the Manchester United D and he's trying to score from 30 yards he's a little bit rattled probably just needs to take a big deep breath needs Steven Gerrard to put his hand on his shoulder and say we do need you for the remainder of this game and Balotelli is sizing up a free kick and he is 34 yards from goal he's a shade right of centre He's got six yellow shirts inside the area. I mean, if he's going for goal here, Stan, it is a really long way out. If he's not going for goal, why isn't Steven Gerrard taking this? Balotelli maybe feels confident that he can pierce David De Gea's goal. 56 on the clock. Balotelli puffs out his chest, steps up, right footed, shoots towards goal, hits the wall. In fact, he hits the wall low down. Ball recycled to the right side. Henderson glances the ball into the channel, out for a goal kick. Well, do you think that Wayne Rooney and Marin Fellaini have been overly tested in the central midfield area, bearing in mind that we've seen an absolute aberration from Michael Carrick and his two defensive teammates? Should Liverpool get beyond those two Manchester United midfielders? No, not at all. I think that they've given the ball Southam away. Southampton gave them much more of the run around. Well, they were really lucky against Southampton. They haven't been lucky here. They just haven't been pressurised enough. And, 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 and Liverpool failed to take two glaring opportunities. Uh, and Liverpool, I think, were the better side for the first 15 minutes of the game. And then they had the stuffing knocked out of them when Rooney scored. And they haven't been able to regain that sort of dynamism that they showed in the first 15 minutes of the match. Skirtle heading the ball into the right format position and Colo Toure nudging it forward to Gerrard. I still do think, though, Stan, if they were to get a goal in this second half, Liverpool, Manchester United would become nervous. No urgency now about Liverpool. Just looking at it, you're looking at individuals, aren't you? The pass, the movement, people being dragged up the pitch to be able to create chances as they did in the first 10, 15 minutes. And Steven Gerrard just isn't that kind of figure anymore that seemingly can take ordinary into extraordinary. He's just sat in front of the back four trying to pick the ball up, but even his influence doesn't seem to be rubbing off on his teammates. Joe Allen, there you go. Picks the ball up in the 10 roll, dispossessed way too easily. And it's light forward by Rooney looking for Van Persie. He's trying to outpace Colo Toure, but Brad Jones is smartly off his line. Very quickly grabs the ball from the sky and then bowls it out into Coutinho. 2 0 Manchester United lead here on Talk Sport. Coutinho, the Brazilian, weaves his way into the central part of the centre circle, gives it to Balotelli, some space wide right for Henderson, Henderson into Coutinho, Coutinho looks to give it back but then comes in field instead, Gerrard arriving now, instead he goes into the centre looking for Sterling, Sterling dispossessed by Jones, and then here is Gerrard joining his Lovren, 25 yards from goal, he shoots, hits the first defender in Jones, pings out to the far left, collected now by Sterling, Sterling now looking to get a shot away, again first defender blocks it, comes back out to Lovren, and now on to Moreno, the left wing back, playing the ball into the channel, looking for Sterling. Sterling goes across, tries to play it against Fellaini. Then across comes uh, Valencia, and it goes out for a goal kick off of Sterling. And it just hasn't been his afternoon, poor old Raheem Sterling. Three goals already this season. It's his 100th appearance for Liverpool. It's not even 20 years of old age yet. Mm. Brendan Rodgers barking out instructions from the side. But just doesn't look a man confident, does he? In bold decision making, Falcao just about. Who do you say to come out and warm but, but, up for but, but Manchester Rogers United? Rogers doesn't look confident. Yeah, Brendan Rogers doesn't look confident. No. And that is such a departure from what we're used to, isn't it? You know, because he is so confident. Is he oozes confidence? He has this sort of almost, you know, positive arrogance about him, doesn't he? I mean, and I'm not saying that in a, in a derogatory way in any way, shape, or form. Here is Balotelli, down the right-hand side, tries to swing across him from the right-wing position. It's off of Carrick and out of play and away for a throw-in. I certainly think for Manchester United, a sort of advocate a change of Falcao coming on for uh, young James Wilson. He's seen precious little service 
None of the Manchester United strikers have, to be perfectly honest. That's Toure playing the ball into uh, Joe Allen. Now to Coutinho. Coutinho pinging the ball out to the far side, the left of Moreno. Moreno back to uh, Lovren. It's all the way back inside the centre circle. And Skirtle, no pressure from Manchester United as Falcao continues to warm up down in front of us on this near touchline. Only played 283 minutes for Manchester United since joining on loan from Monaco. Half an hour to play. It's still 2-0 to, uh, to Manchester United against Liverpool here at Old Trafford. And you just wonder if Liverpool were to score here, what the future would hold for Manchester United. They haven't had much of the ball in this second half and Liverpool have missed a golden opportunity. And it's picked up by Gerrard, but they don't have to force the issue. Why should they? They're 2-0 up. They don't have to go pressurise Liverpool. They can just wait for chances to come their way, maybe on the counter-attack and pick Liverpool off as they go in search of trying to drag themselves back into the game. Here's Allen, dead centre of the Manchester United half. Down the left to Lovren. Lovren into uh, Moreno, who skips past Valencia, then pokes it towards uh, Sterling. Sterling loses out to Jones. That's good muscular play by Phil Jones, who shrugs off the attention of the teenager, and it's cleared away. Henderson stopping Young from clearing. And Ashley Young juggling with the ball down by the corner flag in the left fullback position, turns it against Henderson, and it's out of play and away for a goal kick. And even Jordan Henderson, one of the most effervescent characters, Characters. One of the most committed characters just looks a little bit forlorn as again it just comes off of him and bounces behind, goes back into Manchester United possession. Well, you wouldn't say Manchester United are the physically biggest side, would you? You wouldn't say they were the kind of bullies of the Premier League by any stretch, but they've bullied Liverpool off the ball so many times in this half. I mean, if Chelsea come here, they're not going to get Matic, John Terry, Cahill. Then Diego Costa, they're not going to get bullied and intimidated here. Manchester City, arguably, as well, with the likes of uh, Yaya Toure, Vincent Company. But Liverpool have been so lightweight in key areas that United haven't had to work tremendously hard. I mean, it is a Premier League game, and it's always hard work to, to have an advantage, Sam. Ball out on and on the far side, collected by Wilson, who canters beyond Lovren, gets into the area. Tackle comes in from the Croatian, does really well and takes it off of uh, James Wilson's toes and it's cleared away up to halfway. Here is uh, Valencia, who's played that against Moreno. It's collected by Sterling. Sterling's on the gallop. The referee has pulled it back and it's going to be a foul given against Alberto Moreno and a free kick to Manchester United, 10, 15 yards inside their own half. And four o'clock this afternoon, we've got Cole Collymore, 087-1722-3344. Quickness has fought, has sent Manchester United away. Matter down the right side to Valencia, defended first time, but comes back out to Valencia in the right wing position, gets to the byline, low cross. Van Persie is there! Oh, it's a yard wide of the foot of the post. It just went the wrong side for Manchester United. The defence were wrong-footed. Van Persie received it, and he had all the room to react before anyone else in yellow and stuck it just wide of the post. Yeah, Valencia just drops the shoulder, hits the ball hard and low, right along the six-yard box. And whereas we saw yesterday... Here's Balotelli at the other end, trying to get the better of Carrick. Carrick has his ankles nipped, goes down, free kick given in Manchester United's favour, and Balotelli now is getting frustrated. Just saw that chance again, though, Stan, that Robin Van Persie... Yeah, chance. what Where's I was going to say defenders? yesterday is, is that uh, when we were at Arsenal, we saw Olivier Giroud attack the near post and flick the ball with the outside of his left foot. So we say, with a right foot, you're trying to sweep it in, and with a left foot, you let it come across your body and try to side foot in. Robin Van Persie did that, but just should have waited that extra split second to really let it come across his body and let the goal open up a little bit more. But you're right, Liverpool's uh, central defensive three were caught napping. Bear in mind, it was the second bite of the cherry for Manchester United as well. 2-0, United lead here. And uh, you know, I read this week that Edward Glazer has put three million shares up for grabs in Manchester United. The prospectus indicating that they would be buying more players, even if the manager, Louis van Gaal, doesn't like such speculation. Here is Balotelli. Oh, lovely Rabona out towards the left-hand side to pick out Raheem Sterling. Immediately Phil Jones is in close proximity and just huffs the England man out of it. It's cleared away by Carrick up to Matter and then on to Valencia, who gallops over halfway. He's got Moreno for company. Decent challenge by Moreno to win it back. Lovren then gets challenged by Juan Mata, and the referee gives a free kick against Juan Mata when Mata believes that he won the ball. And the referee is surrounded by red shirts. Mata and Rooney both speaking to Martin Atkinson but the referee is unmoved and it will be a free kick to Liverpool inside their own half well Antonio Valencia just bombs down the right hand side nasty challenge I think by Moreno his position's all over the place and then it's just I think it's a good 50-50 challenge again we're living in a day and an age where you only have to 
show some degree of aggression for the referee to be there immediately. We told you about Falcao warming up. He's just about to... Uh, Lazar Markovic as well, by the looks of it. Yep. Lazar. Stripped and ready for action, yep. Lazar Markovic, who was sent off in midweek. Might be the final change for Liverpool. Here is Rooney sending the ball out wide left. Here is Ashley Young trying to take on Polo Torre in the left wing position. Goes towards the byline, produces a cross, low towards the near post. And coming was James Wilson, but the goalkeeper grabbed it just ahead of the teenager before he could make any contact. And it had to be stopped firmly by Brad Jones. Manchester United will not advance themselves in the Premier League as far as the table is concerned, but they will close the gap on Manchester City. Here's Sterling, though, played through into the area. Great tackle by Phil Jones. Comes back out of Sterling, into Balotelli! Oh, it's put onto the crossbar by David De Gea with another world-class save. Ball into the box from Moreno, comes off of the defender. Valencia goes out for a corner. What a save from De Gea. Absolutely. Oh. Mario Balotelli screaming to the heavens. Good counter-attack by Liverpool. The first challenge by Phil Jones just towards the right-hand side of the six-yard box. He's spot on, but he couldn't stop it coming out to Balotelli, who drives it into the roof of the net and miraculously tipped onto the bar. Here's Balotelli again with an overhead kick, which he doesn't connect with. After Colo Ture recycled the corner, Balotelli tried the acrobatic. He didn't meet the ball. It's out for another corner kick. The second in quick succession, the fifth of the game for Liverpool. What a hand. Really strong hand by De Gea to palm it onto the crossbar. Oh, it's a brilliant save. Halfway through the second half. Terrible delivery, but it might be... Uh, it might favour Liverpool. It won't now because they've managed to clear it. And here come Manchester United on the counter-attack. Moreno is quicker than Mata, though, and he won't get there. Juan Mata and the young Spaniard gets there ahead of the older one. And Liverpool have possession back once again. 2-0, Manchester United lead, but... Balotelli, after a ball from Raheem Sterling, had an excellent opportunity to finish. It was brilliantly tipped. Reaction of a ninja from De Gea to tip it onto the crossbar and behind and out for a corner. I do have to say that where it was, in between the penalty spot and six-yard box, slightly to the right of the penalty spot, if Balotelli goes low either side, he beats the goalkeeper. He's absolutely put his foot through it. And it's rising and rising over only over eight or nine yards so quickly that it's the instincts of De Gea that just throws up a hand which tips it onto the bar. But low, a pass into the net, Balotelli scores. Here we go again. Really good save, actually gets two hands to it. Quite incredible, bearing in mind the pace of the ball. I tell you, see, you see it in slow motion, doesn't do it anywhere near the justice that's required. That came at him like a bullet and he beautifully tipped it onto the top of the crossbar. And let me give you the latest odds from Betfair Talksport's official Sunday exclusive betting partner. Manchester United 25 to 1 on to go and win the game now. 16 to 1 the draw, 60 to 1 Liverpool to come back and win it. And with Betfair you can cash out in play on single or accumulated bets to take your winnings before the end of the match. A 25 pound uh, bet pre-match bet on Manchester United can be cashed out now for £42 and cash out is available on selected markets conditions do apply go to betfair.com download the app and try it today final score from the uh, Scottish Premiership Celtic 4 St Mirren 1 and Celtic now 6 points clear at the top of Inverness and Manchester United will be in third position closing the gap on Manchester City Liverpool will be 10 points off of Manchester United if it continues like this. I mean, at least Raheem Sterling has stepped up to the plate and put himself into positions to be able to challenge, both physically and getting on the ball, having seen a couple of quite poor misses from him. Haven't seen anything from Coutinho. Again, haven't seen anything from Lalana. Markovic is scurrying back into the fullback position after Van Persie played the ball around the corner for Fellaini to chase. Eventually it's worked back to Brad Jones and Henderson now is under pressure from Ashley Young in the left wing position. Brilliant work from Ashley Young. Diligent work from Ashley Young. How, how different is it when you've got a manager that fancies you? Well, Ashley Van Young Gaal is the likes of that, him. Yeah. He really likes him. He sees in him something good attacking, but he was actually very good at Aston Villa defensively at times. I mean, it was John Robertson originally, great Nottingham Forest winger. Scotland international that worked with him when he came from Watford and then he lost his way in his first couple of years at Man United but really good performance James Wilson is coming off 
and on comes Ander Herrera, the £29 million man. He claps the strap, but then James Wilson. And uh, he's given a few hugs by the Manchester United coaching staff. I think it will mean that Wayne Rooney goes up front alongside Van Persie and Herrera will go into midfield alongside uh, Mata and uh, Fellaini. Here's Colo Toure, who's shrugged off the gloves. Ball given away, though, because it's won by Fellaini, and Mata is on the counter-attack here, and he slid the ball through to Rooney. Rooney on the edge of the area, tries to square it for Van Persie. Bad clearance by De Dejan Lovren, comes back to Mata. Then to Van Persie, who slides it home into an empty net because Brad Jones was looking the wrong way. Terrible, terrible Liverpool defending, and once again, Manchester United make them pay. He may well be a fortunate lad to be in the team, but I'll tell you this right now, strikers make their own luck. And Robin Van Persie has just got his seventh goal in ten games against Liverpool, and it's Manchester United 3, Liverpool 0. Well, I think that now Liverpool by rights have the worst defensive... I mean, what are they doing? I'm just looking at the... They're putting their arms up all over the place without actually defending. Lovren just completely shanks it on the penalty spot to the edge of the 18-yard box. Woeful, woeful, woeful clearance. Comes to one matter, who pops it to, the, uh, to Robin Van Persie, who passes it into the back of the net. But you just cannot give away such poor defensive clearances as Dejan Lovren did then, because you're asking to score. What is this going to do to Brendan Rodgers and Liverpool? 08717 This is Talk Sport. Call Colin Moore's on at four o'clock. If you give us a call now, we'll call you back. Manchester United 3, Liverpool nil. And Old Trafford is alive with the sound of Brendan Rodgers. You're getting sacked in the morning. It might be a little bit harsh. I don't think there's any suggestion that that will happen. But there is a lot of work to do for the Liverpool manager. Few of the Liverpool fans have started to leave. They're unhappy. And the big scoreboard away to our right and the scoreboard end will tell you why. It's Manchester United 3, Liverpool nil only on Talk Sport. Here's Van Persie into Rooney. Rooney up to Van Persie once again. Here's Balotelli. Balotelli trying to run between two Manchester United shirts. Oops, again gives the ball away. Pulls back Jones. Cynically, yellow card. That was going to happen. That was always going to happen. Well, three minutes to go. What can you say? I mean, I'm looking around trying to analyse a performance that is so disjointed at the moment that well, uh, well, I'm seeing, like, this is, this is my analysis of Liverpool. Try and get it to Raheem Sterling. He tries and take on three players. It doesn't happen. Balotelli red card waiting to happen. Coutinho, AWOL. Lallana when he was on, AWOL. Joe Allen, the modern-day Ray Wilkins, gets it and passes it sidewards. Steven Gerrard takes no blame for me because he's been there seen got the t-shirt but they do need to look whether he's going to be a continuing fixture in the first team plates three central defenders still can't keep a clean sheet worst away goals conceded now in the Barclays Premier League worse than Queen's Park Rangers well back in March Liverpool came here and won 3-0 how times change and how fortunes change so very quickly in the Barclays Premier League. Manchester United might well be in the hunt, you know. I said it at 10 days ago and people were saying, you're balmy, you're bonkers. Yeah, they not might at not all. Win it, Stan. They might not Ask win it. Jose Mourinho. But they might Ask be up Vincent there. Company. Would you consider Manchester United as a title threat? And the answer would be yes, either privately or publicly. If you win the amount of games this team has done, while still being in transition with so many injuries, it has to be. Well, it really it really has to be. It's no good looking and micromanaging and saying, but this, but that, but the other. They've won six back-to-back -back games now. They've got a horrific injury list of players to come back, which gonna, is going to mean competition for places and choices and freshening things up. No European Champions League or, or European uh, Europa League, which Liverpool, uh, Spurs, Everton, Manchester City... Uh, and Chelsea have got, of course, they're title challengers. Well, I mean, for me, it's pretty simple. What happens when they start playing well? What happens when they stop giving the ball away? What happens when they get all of their players back? What happens when Louis van Gaal's methods really start to take shape? 
Manchester United 3 Liverpool 0 you're listening to Talk Sport and uh, it's 3 0 to Manchester United the ball's loose inside the Manchester United half Coutinho has picked it up done a trick tried to take on Fellaini ran into Fellaini mopped up by Valencia now in the wide right position here's Juan Mata who takes it towards halfway uh, in space on the right side is Valencia they try and find him Mata with a ball that was angled in towards him but it comes off of Joe Allen and bounces out and away for a throw and level with the edge of the area so Falcao just about to come on you know, this result will leave Liverpool with one less point that they had at the same stage in 2010-11 when Roy Hodgson was sacked a month later. Ball is on halfway with Johnny Evans. Cuts it back to Carrick. Carrick forward to Mata. Mata to Fellaini. Fellaini looks up. Liverpool standing off Fellaini as the ball's played to the wide right position. Defensively terrible today, Liverpool. Once again... Far too often that's been said this season. If you're Man United now, one of the things that you can do, you're not going to knock off, so to speak. I mean, they're going to bring on one of the world's great strikers in at his best. But you've got to keep the ball. Give yourself now a, a training ground exercise of 20, 30 passes. Break Liverpool's spirit. Michael Carrick takes over the captain's armband from Wayne Rooney who scored the opener after 13 minutes to give Manchester United the lead. Falcao is coming on as a result. 283 minutes he's played since his low move from Monaco. Only the one goal and that was against Everton. Can he add to that today? Let's go to Swansea City, where Spurs are the visitors to the Liberty Stadium in front of TalkSports. Ian Damter today. Thanks, and two changes for Swansea. Gerhard Tremel comes in in goal for the suspended Lucas Fabianski, and back comes Neil Taylor from a band to play at left-back. Otherwise, Swansea unchanged from their last outing in the Premier League. One change for Spurs from their last Premier League outing, and it's Kyle Worker returning at right-back. Walker back in for Dyer at right-back. Spurs otherwise unchanged from the 0-0 at Palace. Cheers, Gans. Thank you very much. Played 66 minutes, I think, on uh, Thursday night, Carl Walker, and uh, he looked in good nick. I know that he's played a couple of behind-closed-doors games and played an under-21 game as well. And Spurs delighted to have him back in their ranks for the busy Christmas schedule. 3-0 to Manchester United here. Van Persie's just gone through the middle, played in uh, by Falcao, but he was offside as he went round the goalkeeper. Balotelli has it 10 yards outside the Manchester United box, engaged by Fellaini, wins the tackle, gives it to Van Persie, into Ashley Young. Young back up to Van Persie, who turns into trouble, and then Liverpool can spy to give it back again anyway. And it's with Fellaini. You know, they had a major setback in midweek, Liverpool against Basel and they went out of the Champions League they've had a major setback here and they've got a huge game uh, what now becomes a huge game I think on Wednesday night live on Talk Sport down at the south coast against Bournemouth leaders of the championship now if they were to lose that that would really seriously put them in jeopardy I think yeah are Arsenal Bournemouth both passing sides as well that could expose what was a fantastic passing side last season. It gives Brendan Rodgers a headache, doesn't it, Stan? It does, because I think he'd rather play against teams that are a little bit more functional, a little bit longer ball, so he can kind of, like, get back to the philosophy. But both Bournemouth and Arsenal are going to go up against them and say, oh, we'll have a little bit of this, Liverpool will let you play. Really good performance yesterday by Arsenal. What, Bournemouth rattled five in, was it, in the Championship? Yeah, against, against Cardiff. Cardiff. Dear, oh, dear. 0871722344. Call Colin more open for business. We're on air at four o'clock. If you're a Manchester United fan, do you think you can win the title? If you're a Liverpool fan, where has it all gone wrong? And when is this spiral going to stop? Because at the moment, the only way is down. And no one can halt the slide. Loads of changes today. A change of formation. Here is Falcao to the area, played in by Mata, cut out by Skirtle, and the ball runs to the right side, and it's picked up by Valencia. The, one of the problems that Brendan Rodgers is going to have when it comes to the ownership of Liverpool is that his, his premium signings haven't worked. Lovren's been poor, Balotelli has been poor, um, you know, Lalana, Markovic have been average. If he'd have had one or two players, like a Sam Allardyce, Sam Allardyce brought, only brought in three players, all been spectacularly successful. If Brendan Rodgers would have had two or three that had come in, he could have said, well, there's two or three still bedding in. But none of them have played well. 
A ball has been kept in down by the corner flag, picked up by Evans as it's played reverse towards the edge of the Liverpool penalty area. It's now with Van Persie, just outside the box, shoots low towards the goalkeeper's right. He just takes a couple of steps, then drops on the ball and stops it from sneaking in. Ten minutes to go. This is Talk Sport, live at Old Trafford, where it's Manchester United who lead by three goals to nil with Sky Sports. Don't miss a moment of the games that matter this month with Sky Sports. Uh, here is Fellaini sending the ball wide right. Alan Brazil's going to have a lot to talk about tomorrow. Here is uh, Valencia picking the ball and playing it down towards Falcao, who gets challenged by Skirtle. Skirtle slides in and it goes out of play level with the edge of the Liverpool box in front of the Stretford end and out for a throw in to Manchester United, who might think that in the final nine minutes here they can add to their three goal lead that they've built up thanks to goals from Matter to Van Persie and Wayne Rooney. Hindsight is a wonderful thing in football and I do wonder whether Brendan Rodgers when he goes home and he thinks about the transfer budget that he had whether it would have been better whether it would have been better recently the last window to, to buy two absolute quality players rather than spreading his bets over squad players but Liverpool did need to flesh out the squad there's yeah. absolutely no doubt about that especially with Champions League football this season well, he's had a reality check hasn't he this week here is Henderson down the right side into uh, Allen. Fellaini goes across, what's given away by Evans, and there's Henderson into Balotelli. Balotelli shoots, and it's straight into the arms of David De Gea. He was falling back, Mario Balotelli, as he went to shoot that. Didn't get the requisite power on it. David De Gea reacted instinctively and went down to his right and stopped it. Well, when it comes to Balotelli, a mistake, an uncharacter uncharacteristic mistake from the Manchester United back line in the last 10, 15 minutes. They've defended overall quite well. I've been impressed with Marin Fellaini, I have to be said today. He's put himself about. I said before the game that he could be the difference because he's the biggest physical threat in the central midfield area from either side, and that's proven to be the case. But disappointed from Balotelli. He's on the half turn. He goes to ground on the penalty spot, trying to get the strike on target. But this uh, wonderful goalkeeper that Manchester United purchased that came in, a little bit of a tough opening, few games for him really grown into uh, the Guardian's role here at Old Trafford. Eight minutes to go, you're listening to Talk Sport. I don't know about the dog and duck, but some of Liverpool's defending has been quackers. Here's Van Persie getting away from Gerrard, moving towards the edge of the area, feeding Falcao down the left channel, pulls the ball back. Van Persie tries to head it back goalwards, and it's straight into the arms of Jones, who meets it before it reaches the edge of the six-yard area where Mata was coming in to try and just help it on beyond the Australian. It's 3-0 to United. Valencia's got it back from Sterling, who was trying to attack down the left-hand side. He was played in by Allen. Allen's now walking back at like a snail's pace because he knows that the game is up. And we've got six and a half minutes to go here. Sterling's picked it up, though, taking the ball off of Fellaini, giving it to Balotelli. He's going to shoot from 30 yards, and he hits it with real venom this time. De Gea goes flying across to his right, but it's three yards wide. Yellow cards just come out here for Robin Van Persie. Or is it Gerrard? I can't work it out. Both of them are saying that it was unnecessary. I think it's Steven Gerrard who's been booked here. Um, and that was because of a tussle involving Van Persie and Gerrard for the last break. Well, nine goals against Manchester United. Steven Gerrard, often the saviour, scored two penalties here last season and missed one but still managed to secure all three points when they came here back in March. He's hardly had a kick in a positive sense today. Stephen Gerrard is now in the referee's notebook. Five minutes to go. Manchester United leading and winning. Markovic sliding the ball through to Baratelli. He's got beyond Evans. He shoots again. It's stopped by David De Gea, who narrowed the angle, made his body big, produced a decent save. It wasn't a great finish, it must be said. Here's Colo Toure chasing through. But again, Balotelli gets himself into a good position. Again, he was played in well by Lazar Markovic. The United defending, something to be desired there, it must be said. Well, that's but what I mean. He, I mean didn't they, they, he didn't finish. They could end this game with a clean sheet. Against a premium quality Premier League or European side. A team scores five today against Manchester United, perhaps. Well, definitely gets on the scoreboard, that's for sure. Uh, but Mario Balotelli and Raheem Sterling have both missed big chances. David De Gea has done a sterling job, must be said. And as the Liverpool end empties out away to our right-hand side, a glance up at the scoreboard will tell you that Manchester United are taking all three points. 
and Louis van Gaal's team about to open up a 10-point gap on Liverpool. It'll be their seventh win in eight games at home here for Manchester United. And for Liverpool, Stan, only three wins in 13. And Tottenham can go above them today. Yes, and, uh, well, in terms of the Premier League and how it's panning out, we're just starting to see the good sides now, aren't we? Rise a little bit. I still think there's plenty of wiggle room left for Liverpool, Massa, Sam. right wing position, sends the ball into the box. It's collected by Ander Herrera. Joining up left side now is Ashley Young. Young comes in field, gives it to Fellaini, who's 25 yards from goal, dead centre of the Liverpool half. Sends it wide right into Valencia, plays it into Mata. Mata tries to poke the ball into the air, looking for Falcao. Way by Lovren, but comes straight to Van Persie. Van Persie with an instinctive volley with his left foot, tipped over the top by Brad Jones. Oh, what a wonderful piece of skill by the Dutchman. Well, he caught that on the meat of the foot, right on the top of the boot. Again, Lovren, 50 pence he's got on top of his head, hasn't he? Comes off the corner of it, he chests it, takes it up in front of Colo Torre. Oh. Looking for that audacious chip. Remember George Best doing that many, many moons ago. Not quite with the same pace, but with the same little flick. The audacious flick of the boot on the edge of the D. Good save by Jones. Corner kick to be taken near side. In front of the Stretford end. Down by the tunnel. It's Ashley Young who will distribute. And Herrera goes short. Wants it. Gets it. He's now on the left edge of the area, gives it back to Young, who's got time to get the ball into the box. He goes low to Mata. He swirls across into the six-yard area. It's helped away by Skirtle. Into the air off of Balotelli's head, runs loose into the left fullback position. Sterling goes over and chases it and clears. I wonder what Brendan Rodgers is going to say after the game. Don McGuinness will be in the tunnel and he'll find out for you. You hear those interviews as the afternoon continues here on Talk Sport. Four o'clock, call Colin Moore. Six o'clock, the press pass with Ray Stubbs and the gang. Very much worth listening to tonight as they dissect all the weekend's football in the Barclays Premier League. And tomorrow morning, the Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast back. When you wake up, make sure you're tuned in. Here's Skirtle at the heart of the, Manchester, uh, the Liverpool defence, turning the ball out to Colo Toure. The Manchester United fans, you know, sometimes can leave early, actually. But uh, today, a lot of them have stayed right to the end. Here's Herrera as the ball's picked up on halfway and Manchester United nicked it. Herrera moving away towards the edge of the area, blocked by Colo Turi, turns, wins the free kick. And this free kick is in a nice position for Manchester United. It is six, seven yards back from the edge of the area, just a touch, a couple of inches left of centre. Well, somebody's going to take that with real confidence. Everybody wants to go and take it. <laughs> You're going to make another substitution as well. Yeah, Jones coming off and foul, uh, and McNair is coming on. And Phil Jones, actually, I think, has played really well today, despite the fact that he's had uh, some injury troubles and was only supposed to play in an emergency. But because of the training ground injury to Marcus Rocco, what's that, 44 injuries now for Manchester United since Louis van Gaal took over? He had to play today. And Paddy McNair comes on for the last few moments. Well, they've got the luxury of being able to give more game time to some of the youngsters, but just standing over the ball, one <laughs> matter. Ashley Young, Radamel Falcao, two, three yards outside of the D, a touch to the left, which probably just favours the right footer. Now, Radamel Falcao has only scored once for Manchester United. It was against a team from Liverpool. He steps up, right-footed, he drives it into the wall, comes back to him, strikes it again, blocked by Steven Gerrard, and it bounces into the... Manchester United half and David De Gea who picks it up 10 yards outside his own box is encouraged to shoot by the Manchester United crowd um, it's been that sort of afternoon for Manchester United who lead Liverpool by three goals to nil ball loose on halfway Allen oh he slipped over Fellaini's nipped in Fellaini to the left and now Ander Herrera Herrera forward to Falcao back into Herrera and then on to Mata it's a little bit heavy for Mata and Skirtle comes across on the edge of his own area and mops up for Liverpool Coutinho trying to get away from Evans here plays it past Fellaini but Evans still chasing wins it and then rather sloppily gives it away what will Louis van Gaal have learned about his side today well, just get a tweet here, Sam, which filters into what I'm going to say. Played both Chelsea and Manchester City, conceded only two goals, and they're missing three of their strongest back four. The issue is, is can, they get, can they keep clean sheets by merit? A little bit lucky today. I mentioned if they play a premium side, and I am thinking about Europe's best. I think that Manchester United always score goals, always create chances, but I think today they concede three or four against the very, very best in Europe. 
if they can cut down those mistakes, if they can get people back from the treatment table quickly, get a settled back four playing together, maybe, maybe have the finances to be able to bring somebody in in January, top quality central defender, then you have to put them in the title race. I mean, people are saying, oh, well, City and Chelsea playing so... It doesn't matter about how well you're playing. It actually matters more, ironically, to be winning games when you're not playing well, because you know on the back of that a good spell is going to come. Herrera down the left to Van Persie, slides it in towards a six-yard box, diverted away from the edge of that six-yard box by Martin Skirtle, the Slovakian. Knocks it out towards this near side and away for a throw. Manchester United leading by three goals to nil. And they have a throw down by the corner flag, which they will take an absolute age overtaking because we're in for two minutes of added time at the end of the game. One of the other things I wanted to ask you, actually, Stan, was are Manchester United la last season's Liverpool, this season's Liverpool from last year? Without a doubt, the you surprise get more time package. on the training ground. Less travelling time. I think that the, tr the time on the training ground when everybody else, we're all watching our televisions and listening to radios, watching Champions League football and all the build-up, it makes a little bit of difference mentally and physically to the players just to not be in that limelight. Yeah. Even over five or six match days or ten match days, wherever yeah. it is in the Champions League, that can make a, a, a significant difference. And, and that was noticeable in Liverpool's freshness last year. Uh, they've given the ball away on their own edge of their own penalty area again, Liverpool. This time to Herrera. Van Persie under pressure from Sterling. Just keeps Manchester United in possession. They scored their opener after 13 minutes. Matter scoring after Rooney had put them in front just before half time with a goal which looked at shade of offside. Quite a deal of offside. But then Van Persie made the point safe on 72 after another mistake from Dayan Lovren. Here is Falcao, who's come on for the last 10 minutes trying to battle with Skirtle. Ball flung forward. Sterling is ahead of McNair. McNair gets back to the edge of his own area to block the run of Sterling. Sterling still trying to weave inside the Manchester United penalty area. He's had a couple of chances today, Raheem Sterling. He's never managed to put them away. Two glaring opportunities that have been missed by the youngster, who's going to be a great talent. He's going to be a superb footballer. His finishing might need a little bit of work. He might need to knuckle down a little bit and make sure that he, his game develops as much as uh, it should fulfills his potential here's the corner delivered to the far post De Gea who's been safe and sturdy for the entire 90 minutes clutches it from the misty moist late afternoon sky pulls it into his chest and then bowls it out to halfway where Radamel Falcao is waiting for it Manchester United was second best in the first 15 minutes they scored against the run of play and then took charge of the match Liverpool looked beaten and a shadow of the side that were close to winning the title last season after conceding that first goal. And even though they created opportunities for Sterling and Balotelli, they never looked really like getting back into the game. They flirted with a comeback, but they never sealed the deal. And Manchester United were allowed to take all three points. If there was one thing on every Manchester United fan's Christmas list, it was for their team to beat Liverpool. Well, Santa's come early and he's been dressed up like Dayan Lovren in the Liverpool defence. United have a ten-point lead over the Reds and the gap to City is now just five points. It's finished at Old Trafford. Manchester United three, Liverpool nil. Might be ten days of shopping left till Christmas. There are 17 days of shopping left until the January transfer window opens. And my word, the Liverpool need to buy again or else they're absolutely down and out. Magnificent from Manchester United in the end, although Brendan Rodgers will stand outside his dressing room and do a television interview when he can say we've had six chances to score six goals today, never deserved to win the game, but could easily have scored six with somebody who fancied a finish today. It's been an extraordinary game and it's one that Manchester United deserve but they still will get as Stan was saying completely undone by a major side if they're going to defend and give the ball away like that they get the three points they can move on though to 31 still five behind Manchester City and still plenty behind Chelsea eight in fact and we're back with Liverpool on Wednesday night in the Capital One Cup. We're around the grounds on Tuesday night. Plenty more action to come next weekend. And the Tyneweir Derby for you on Sunday exclusive next Sunday. So, Stan, strange, strange old game, that one, because Manchester United cruised through it in the end there. And as you said, against anybody that could finish. I mean, think of the transfers here. 
is there nearly a case to say, I'll go and spend 120 million on somebody like Lionel Messi or somebody like that, and he'll score goals? Because if you're going to play the way that Liverpool do and the way that Manchester United do, if you don't take your chances, you've, you're completely nullified, and that's what happened to Liverpool today. Well, I think that for Liverpool, primarily the one thing and the only thing, arguably, that Brendan Rodgers can draw upon is that they did have chances. Six. I think six that, that was down chances. to poor Manchester United defending. We'll come to Manchester United shortly. Raheem Sterling playing in that position isn't an actual goal scorer, is an actual chance creator. So that was always a gamble that if he was presented with opportunities, was he going to score them? The answer is no today. If Manchester United can rectify and keep clean sheets on merit. Today was a fortunate clean sheet. Yep. I think that's fair to yeah, say. Yeah, I think that's fair, very but fair. It's a clean sheet. Yeah, yeah. It's a great start. And, 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 and a coach is always, playing at the a, top of his a, game. A coach will always say to his players, brilliant, we kept a clean sheet and we've won. If Manchester, and I said this two weeks ago before when people were still mocking Manchester United, the expectation on players at this club is always great to win titles. There are multiple title winners, champions of Europe, champions of England in there, in that team. Yes, they're in transition. Yes, they've got injuries. Yes, they've got a new manager. If Manchester United can defend and merit, they've only conceded three goals against Chelsea, Arsenal and Manchester City, bearing in mind, in the big games. They haven't been hammered by any of them. United are in this title race. They are the most unorthodox team in that title race but you do not win six games no. back to back with this kind of expectation on you with the injury list that they've got unless you have something about you Manchester United Football Club I repeat along with Chelsea along with Manchester City will be in the title race for the long haul in this bar well they don't have an inferiority complex you see of course they don't because they've got multiple winners Liverpool, as we got to the last six games of last season, can we do it? This has been a long time since we've done it. Manchester United were champions two years ago. Two years ago. Absolutely dependent on their ability to defend as a unit. At times today, I think that they don't keep the ball well enough, from being hypercritical. At times today, they were Keystone Cops defending. Yeah, they were. But without a shadow of a doubt, a 3-0 victory when you are average to good against a local rival in the biggest game in English, English football should even tell the football illiterate that there is a spark of something there developing at Manchester well, look, United. Is it the new way of playing this game, Stan? That it doesn't really matter what you do at the back anymore. Have a really good goalkeeper, get the odd bit of luck, but as long as you're going to score goals, happy days. And I think that really looks the way. Uh, that's what Liverpool did last season. It's what Manchester United are doing this season. I mean, you know, Stan, if you were to look critically at Manchester United, I don't want Manchester United fans to be moaning when you, they speak to you later on, because, you know, that's a great win against Liverpool today. But three of their main midfielders get booked very early on in that game against any cute side, any top Champions League side at the moment, and I'm not putting Liverpool in that bracket, then they're under real pressure, never mind the chances that they're giving to the opposition as well. And that was the big difference for me today. Liverpool, lightweight all the way, every single time, had plenty of chances. Balotelli's not the one for them. I think we've seen enough of him. I don't care what anybody says. But who is going to be Stan's man of the match with Sky Sports? Man of the match on Talk Sport with Sky Sports. Watch all seven Sky Sports channels anywhere you like on Sky Go. Yeah, I was just thinking about outfield players. Then you're thinking players that are scoring goals, players that are creating chances. What about the couple of saves by David De Gea? Kept his side in it. David De Gea is my man of the match. Oh, I, I, look, I think you're absolutely spot on. Just talk about one or two of the other players you could have given it to. I thought Robin van Persie has, has decided he wants to play again for Manchester United. Well, of course he does. <laughs> players like Robin van Persie want to play and be a part of a team that's winning and going places and the promises that Sir Alex Ferguson gave him about winning multiple titles, etc., etc. He's got the spectre of a young lad behind him, which no senior pro likes in James Wilson. He's got the spectre of Radamel Falcao, 
that was brought in to potentially replace him. I don't know him, that I'd waste my money on him, though, do you, would you? On Falcao? No. I think that goal scoring is, is going to be the, the, the least of Manchester United's problems. I think that all they need is to decide whether they're going to go with a back four or a back five. He really likes Ashley Young, there's no doubt about that, and I thought that Ashley Young played well defensively today. So he's got flexibility to flick between a four and a five. But go back to it, Manchester United are in a title race. You, you can't discount them because they've got multiple title winners in there. This isn't Liverpool from last season that were going into the last eight or nine games into the unknown, having not won it for donkey's years. Man United have won it fairly recently. So if they can have a, a manager like Louis van Gaal mm. that gives them that belief, look, you walk into the dressing room and go, brilliant clean sheet, fellas. You know, Ryan Giggs will go in there and the coaching staff, great clean sheet, defended well, knowing well that they didn't <clears throat> at times defend well today. But the result shows that they can create and score goals exactly. and they can keep clean sheets when they've got a big injury list and they're not playing particularly well. I don't think that was a great Man United performance today. No, I think you're absolutely right. But I right thought there. it was it was oh. it was starting to bubble up oh, to oh, six, absolutely. six and a half, seven. Seven turns into eight with a clean sheet and scoring goals. And while well betide somebody, somebody's gonna come off with a six or a seven against this lot when they when they learn to get on the ball a little bit more, give each other a little bit more of a cuddle. And, and play with a, a confidence from goal, not just the goalkeeper, but all the way through the team. Manchester United will beat somebody by six or seven this season. David De Gea, then the man of the match with Sky Sports. See more of the games that matter on Sky Sports.